normal. Tinkling keys, also hello. This main menu is really cool, though. I think last time, on Friday, I was playing with keyboard and mouse, and it did cause a few issues now and then. Um, I complained about- complained very loudly, and correctly so, about the fact that, like, if you're holding down to look around and you run into a scene where someone's talking, you'll always skip the first bit of text, for whatever reason. Um... So I'm gonna see if it'll let me play with a controller, but it pff, might not want to. There we go. It was- it was definitely, um... Excuse me. This was definitely designed for a controller, I'll say that much. Because that KBM, those KBM controls felt busted by comparison to what I'm doing right now, and I'm only in a menu. Oh, but now I'm controlling the mouse around, which feels a lot weirder. But that's fine. I had the stream pause like a dingus, no worries. I think that it's just the main menu that's so loud, or at least it's really loud for me. And then I'll calm down later. But let me let this Pokemon spawn first. Because I think it might throw us in there. Seems fine, that's good. It's always hard to tell when something's loud for y'all versus loud for me. Equalizers don't tell the whole story, which is... This doesn't seem right, but is true. I don't know how many Poke Dollars I have. Ooh, there's a Heat more in chat. Three balls if you want. I think an Ant Eater? Is Heat more the Ant Eater? Or is Heat more... Hang on, I'm looking it up. Yeah, heat more is the ant eater. Um, how do you check how many poke dollars you have? I, it's, I have to check what it is. I want to say it's like pokey status. Let me see. Dang, are we solving all seven mysteries? A Hodge over here. What's up, Dull Focus? How are you? Uh, maybe. Now that I'm, now that I'm allowed to play the game, maybe. Oh, it's pokey pass. That's what it is. I can never recall pokey pass. There you go. Ooh, she has money! <laughs> hey, good. How are you? I'm doing all right. I've been very sedentary today. Night before daylight savings, I stayed up super late, no reason. And then I said, I'm gonna get my sleep schedule back on track. And then daylight savings hit. So that didn't happen. Um, eh. Last night, nestling down for bed, very tired. Head hits the pillow. Get craving for spicy noodles. A, ooh, big craving for spicy noodle. <laughs> so I go and make myself spicy noodle. Nongshim kimchi ramen, of course. Um, so yeah, I woke up very late. I meant to go on a walk today, especially like the perfect time to go on a walk because normally where I live, it's 80 to 90 degrees and UV index, which is a measure of like how bright the sun is, is usually at 10 or higher. So people don't even know that it can go over 10. But today it was like really, really overcast and kind of um, a little bit colder, like 60 degrees, which is not normal. So I was like, oh, it's a perfect day to go for a walk. But then I had to run errands. And then it was time to stream. So, didn't get to that, but that's all right. GG Tour, congrats on the heat more. Classic daylight savings behavior, I get it. I know. But I, I have to say, I'm not a daylight savings hater the way a lot of people are. But I would want, I think I would want the daylight savings time to become, like, the standard one. Because I am not going to have the the sun setting at fucking 6.30 or 5.30 in the winter. I'm That's not going to happen. We should mandatorily make the day longer on the tail end, in my opinion. <laughs> if I had to decide, that's what it would be, but I don't mind... I'm not a daylight savings hater. I want the sun to set at 1 p.m. No! We need sun. 
It also said it was going to rain today and it didn't, so maybe I should have gone on a walk. That's tragic. Uh, I'm trying to think of anything else I've been up to. Not really. Not really. Not really. I mean, over the weekend I did a lot of writing on a, sec on a project that will stay secret until I am close to it. Until it's close to being done. Because I should start doing that. I uploaded some ASMR. That's true. ASMR on the ASMR channel. Gonna continue to do so. Um, Watch the Latin American Games Showcase, which was really cool. Um, a few of my uh, favorite friends streamers uh, co-streamed it, like Lo-Fi Night. Well, I don't know Lo-Fi Night, but they seem really nice. Uh, Ed, I geeked out, streamed it. Space Val, Kreeze, Val streamed it. You have an ASMR channel? I do, Zazie. I do now. I just made it, like, maybe two weeks ago? I still haven't... Hang on. Let me make a command that's just the link to the channel. Because I can do that in like three seconds. I always like my commands to look a little bit nicer, but fuck it. This one can just- this one can just be- It'll just be exclamation point ASMR from now on. Until I make a nicer one. Oh yeah, speaking of commands, quick content warnings command for this game. Uh, M-rated horror game, paranormal horror game, we're gonna be killing people, there's ghosts, there's some jump scares, scary music. Stuff like that. I believe there's also a, a side story where there's like a mystery of a high schooler who's said to have committed suicide, but they don't know if she really did or not. I assume stuff will happen there. So just making sure that y'all uh, know exactly what the vibe is. I feel like that's probably all I have to get caught up on. Apparently I have to start the game with the mouse, which is weird, but then it can be on controller. So I was playing things through Steam is is odd. Oh, see, look, this is with a controller. This feels weird. <laughs> Trying to decide if having seven mysteries is too many or too few for Subwood. Well, here's the thing, though, Focus. Also, wait. Do you prefer to be called Chris? Either way, let me know. But I just recall something like that from a John stream. I'm pretty sure you're going to be playing as multiple characters. So there's that. And there are actually, technically, legally, more than seven. It's just that the seven are the important ones, I suppose. So, Detective fam, exactly. Whichever is good, it's a good... Alright, alright. Just making sure. Um, See, so yeah, I guess we can go to any of these. I kind of... I don't know, I'm kind of interested in the story after um, Yoko dies, but... The thing is that the narrator was really like, hey, you should go check out what happened when Yoko died, huh? So I guess... I feel like I'm still a little bit at the end of the fake tutorial here. The not tutorial tutorial, so I'm just gonna do what the narrator says until they decide uh, not to. So I guess we'll do restart. This is so weird the way I came. Ooh. Let me put it away. Let me put it behind me so you can't see it. Shogo? Shogo, are you alright? Hey, can you hear me? Wait, do I still have- no I don't. I was gonna say, do I still have some of the sound effects turned off? No, no, no. I'm good. Huh? This is weird that I can't just press A or move through the decisions. I have to- I think it's just because I'm playing the PC version with a controller that it's kind of like awkward. Hey, that's not a proper answer. Earth is Shogo Okie. What do you think you're doing falling asleep here? You gave me quite the shock. Come on now. Up with you. Up. Okay, and... Ugh. There. How's that, alright? You feel dizzy? Have a headache? Are your humors off balance? Love giant captions. Yeah, they're, they're a good size here. I'm fine. I think. There's definitely nothing wrong with my humors, though my head's still a little fuzzy. Uh-oh. That doesn't sound good. Turn your head around a little bit to see if you can walk alright. Who do you think has the best revive target and why is it Yoko's dog? I don't give a fuck about Yoko's dog. I am not a- Can you pet the dog? Ooh, ooh big fluffy pupper doggy! I am not that person. Uh, it's definitely the high schooler who allegedly committed suicide, but probably didn't. Good, good. You seem to be fine. What a relief. Do you remember anything? Like where we are or what we were doing? 
A cat person I see? Nope. They are animals. <laughs> I don't care about animals as much as I care about people. Hot take. The Rite of Resurrection? Huh? Wait a second. When did I tell you about that? I mean, I guess I must have, seeing as you know that name, but... Weird. Anyway, you still seem a little out of it. Why don't you look around a bit more? Oh, so maybe restart is not what I wanted. What's a revive target? So the thing is, Daisy, this whole thing is about like the rite of resurrection. Um, but if I do resume... And so, theoretically, every one of the curse bearers who's actually trying to, like, get through this is trying to revive somebody. I thought I meant a dog who revives people, which I was down for. No, no, no. So basically, the Rite of Resurrection is like a, a sorcery myth that by doing something involving the seven mysteries of Hanjo, you'll be able to resurrect somebody. And Yoko wants to resurrect her dog who died at... He died at a pretty old age. Didn't he die at like 11 or something like that? Which isn't the oldest age a dog can live, but this is set in like the 70s or 80s. So that's like, it's not exactly the shortest life for a dog of the time. Seven, I think. I think she had the dog for eight years. But I think the dog was older than that. I don't remember. The fact of the matter is, whatever. Um... And so theoretically, we, we find out that all the curse bearing stuff is like, if we can get our curse to 100 and then do something with it, then we should be able to um, resurrect. So theoretically, everyone's trying to resurrect somebody. Hey, Saturn. Is, is this the artist formerly known as Saturnarius? One thing I know from the media. Resurrection never goes wrong, exactly. Yes? Okay, perfect. Welcome. I love how it's twitch.gov. Government website. Twitch.tv. Alright, let's start from here. Yeah. Hang on. Because there's... I guess this... Why can I even go back all this way? I guess it wants me to go here and then get to the split... Of Yoko? I guess we'll start from the beginning. It's all a psyop slash J. I mean, they let the army on here, so... This definitely seems like a bad idea from the get-go, you know. Some people like to play with God. <laughs> I'm not one of them. All right, we know that Yoko sees something behind us. All right, and let me click on these just so that they remember. And then I gotta look at the playground. I forget exactly when this happens. I think it happens while we're talking to Yoko, but I don't remember like the last thing that we said. Sorry that I'm skipping through this, but... Ah, see? There's Jost. In the rare Gamer W, I think we bully them off with the, <laughs> the bomb emojis, yeah. How does Yoko get killed by the curse anyways? That's what we're trying to figure out right now. I just know that it happens right around here. We see the Jost behind us and then nothing. She just points behind it. She like points and sees something weird, and then she fucking keels over. Maybe she's just a very good actor. <laughs> yeah, maybe she actually just didn't like us. Ah, this interface for controller is kind of weird. Nah, fuck this. I'm using my keyboard and mouse. What a what a weirdly designed game. But I th again, I think it's because 
I'm playing on PC with controller. I feel like if I was playing on console with controller, it would probably be more normal, but um, they didn't make it that way, so. And like I said, listen, I don't need to be alive again. You could always come over to this side. You'll get there eventually. I also don't know if there's actually anything for me to figure out here, or if again this is part of the game's tutorial and I just have to like wait until she dies and then the guy will show up and be like, by the way. That style is very 90s horror anime too. Yeah, Zazie, um, I think it's the lead character artist, um, was the lead character artist on Neo Twoey. I think you get at least warn her or like lead her away from here. Well, the thing is, because I'm not playing as Shogo, I'm playing as me. I'm playing as the player. So Shogo doesn't know anything is going to happen yet. It's exactly the same as before. That's the thing. The number of times I've asked someone out and they feign death by ghost to get out of it. Yeah? On what? Uh, Neo, Neo, the world ends with you, and I think the original too. Right, her dog's name is Ogopogo, which is funny. Yeah, she had him for eight years. And she don't even know if it works on dogs. Ogopogo's a really good name. Isn't that the first boss of that Star Wars game? Yeah, Oingoi Boingoi? It's so hard to say. Oingo, Oingo Boingoi? I can't say it. Never mind, leave me alone. There's a Nicket in chat, which is a little fox Pokemon from Generation 8, the Pokemon Sword and Shield English Generation. Throw your balls if you want little fox. I'm gonna try to catch a little fox. Ooh, that's not how that works. I mean, if it doesn't work on dogs, you could always use it to resurrect a person. It's true. But what if she tries to use it on the dog and something bad happens? Nicket evolves into one of the ugliest bastards I've ever seen. No, I love it. What is, I don't remember what it's called, but it's because it, it looks like a, a gentleman thief. I think it's funny. There we go. It's right here. And then when we turn around... Oh, she's not dead yet. Swaggy Swiper, exactly. We love criminal-coded Pokemon. <laughs> Maybe I need to... Now this one is actually just for me, honestly. This is barely for the game. I feel like I can't see fuck at anything. Wow, rip. It got away. Who's your favorite character in the game so far? Honestly, I really liked, um... Yutaro, the college student, who's like, let's let's uh, let's join forces, and then when he finds out that you've killed like five people, he just fucking murks you. <laughs> He's like, actually, you're a freak, and I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> just because I think that that is hilarious. Here we go, push. Eric, I don't get this. What's going on? Did something happen? Yoka. I know, this is the same as before. So yeah, I guess we do kill her somehow, but I don't know how. Like the high school girl with the highest count, she gives the highest percent, right? Um, no, she doesn't. The guy who we don't see who tries to, like, jump us in the alley gives the highest count. If, it, if they don't, then it's really close together.
Like, I think I think they might be different by a matter of like seven or eight percent or something like that. Which, you know, is is a difference, but I don't know if it's great enough to to be the drama. Followed by a one dollar lighter, exactly. Hmm. I wish there was a way to tell the last thing the narrator said, but I think it'll be too far away. Yeah. Oh, it gave me the gamepad one. That's funny. Oh, when it says something's happening to Yoko, it's something already happened to Yoko, huh? Oh no, here we go, here we go. Keep yelling your name. There we go. Huh? What? Is calling your name really going to help? I love making that fucking anime noise. I'm already yelling as hard as I can. Shouldn't I look for what's causing this? There's nothing there. Yoko, hang in there, Yoko. Look at me. You're going to be okay. It's all right. There's nothing there. Ah! Yoko! There you go. Summary of previous events. It's fine. We were just there. I don't even know why it took us back to- I guess just to show us that we got a new thing. Kinshi Buddy Park, 1 a.m. Hey, let's go. Puzzle solving master. I pressed the buttons it let me press this time that I couldn't press the last time. <laughs> huh. This face? <laughs> huh? Oh, good, you're awake. What? Uh, uh. Are you okay? You were so rattled and confused, I thought you'd really lost it. Do you feel dizzy? Have a headache? Are your humors off balance? Aw, that's cute. Wait, what did you say? I think I've heard that before. You're the one who said it earlier. Oh, right. That might have been it. My humors were off balance. What, back there? You ended up like that because of your humors? Yeah, I've heard that at this age, your humors being even a little bit off can be fatal. I'm glad you're back to normal now. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cause you so much trouble. But I really don't remember what happened. Hmm. Sounds like what happened to me. Maybe this place is dangerous somehow? What? Are you backing out? Yeah, it just doesn't feel safe to me and I'm worried about you. Let's call off today's investigation. Come on, I just started feeling back to normal, too. Nope, not happening. Go home. I'll even pay your cab fare, okay? I ended up having to force a still-protesting Yoko into a taxi. Even then, she still wouldn't stop complaining. So to placate her, I promised I'd search the park on my own for a little while longer. It's not safe here, so I'll stay here alone. Incredible. So you might, I mean, if, if all this takes place, how long do you stay here, dog? It's not safe here for her. Yeah, 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 yeah. All puzzle gamers are just pushing buttons, I think, probably. The doctor. I am the puzzle gamer. <laughs> you don't die until you get burned alive. I wonder if they'll be in a different order depending on how you do it, you know? I'm sure it depends. How we feel in Sea Shanty Lovers. In further news... Uh oh. How we feel in... Before dawn today, a police officer on patrol discovered a man collapsed in a Sumida City Park. The man was taken to the hospital, but his death was confirmed shortly after. Investigations are still underway, but police suspect a connection to the other unexplained deaths found in the area at around the same time. ting a ling a ling a ling a ling
You insult me with your fucking late title. I'll kill you. Now? Of all times? Ooh, look, a seagull, I think. Weird. Weird a, cho a weird choice. Thanks, all doll seven. Well, bye everybody. Weird. Weird, 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 weird. I missed last stream. What is this game? This is Paranormal Site, the seven mysteries of Hanjo about these mysteries. Um, but these like myths slash mysteries in I think they said I think it's the southern half of Tokyo that have like gone down and down through the centuries all the way from the Edo period to now and they allegedly all kind of connect to this thing called the Rite of Resurrection which will allow you to bring someone back from the dead. We find out that the way that people do this is that there is one curse associated with each of the mysteries and there is nowadays a curse bearer where what they were saying, all the mysterious deaths that happened around the same time. Something happened, and all the curses found curse bearers at like the same time. And now all the curse bearers know that if they start killing people, they will be able to charge up their curses, and if they charge them up all the way, they should be able to perform the right and bring someone back uh, to life. The thing is that all the curse bearers can see other curse bearers too, and they will get more points towards the right being fulfilled if they get other curse bearers. So it's like everyone's kind of trying to kill each other at the same time, but we don't know who's who. And we're kind of, they don't know exactly who the curse bearers are. They don't see them and are like, oh great, a curse bearer. But it's like they can they can context clue it out in a way that other people can. So it's like Fortnite, it's just like Fortnite. It's just like Battle Royale, the novel. Well done in your efforts thus far. This brings Shokooki a story to a close. Ah, but this is not the end. Far from it. In fact, this is where the story finally begins. Playtime. Five hours. The roots of the three protagonists have now been unlocked. Haruhei Shigima, a woman who lost her son when he was kidnapped and murdered. Tetsuo Tsutsumi, the chief inspector of the first investigative division, who is looking into the death of an officer in the line of duty. Yako Sakazaki, a high school girl who wants to bring her friend back from the dead. A girl who died in a suspicious suicide. Each of them is burdened with circumstances that leave them no choice but to seek the right of resurrection. Following these three storylines will reveal the full nature of all that is occurring. With that, please enjoy the continuation of this tale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't believe they made me do all that shit. There's... And you're not any of them, just a feller watching. Yeah, I'm I'm playing as the player. I wouldn't say no choice in what, ZZ. Oh yeah. May those who mock fires flame perish in flame. Kill them. Kill them. The flame bearers. Kill them all. You've acquired the power of the curse stone, the haunting clappers. You can use it to kill those with fire or a fire starting device on their person. Press the use curse button to set your target alight. I'm always saying this. They had no choice but to do wildly ridiculous nonsense. They could just mind their business. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Allegedly, there's no way to get rid of the curse, I guess, is the main thing. So, like, they know someone's gonna kill the. I don't know. A murderous impulse seeps into my soul like thick black tar. Now, kill. Can you hear it, Curse Bearer? You who so strongly desires the right, kill them. When a murderous impulse seeps into your soul like sick wax heart, you just gotta do what comes natural. 12 a.m. How do I shigama? Shigama mansion. Oh, the mansion! Shogo did say she seemed rich. Back with me, ma'am? This is the sexy investigator, man. Can't say I understand what just happened. But it certainly seems to have put you in a good mood. 
This might be the first time I've ever seen you really smile. <laughs> Sweet dreams? Housewife, how do you see you? We'll read those in a bit. No. Not dreams. Sounds like something I might want to hear about. Hanging scroll? An old hanging scroll. I don't know who painted it. It's been hanging here since before I was born. Flower arrangement? An arrangement of flowers. We bring in someone to do it. I don't even know what the flowers are called. A stereo unit with separated speakers designed for home use. My husband insisted on buying one, even though he isn't one to listen to music often. We got that kind of money. What's this? Well, I'll be damned. Is that what I think it is? Goodness, you made me jump. It's just a silly little sticker my my son got from somewhere or other. He put it up there just before... Well, you know what happened. I still can't bring myself to take it down. Let me take a closer look. I knew it! It's Head Hencho from way back in set number one! This is a real collector's item! Excuse me? Don't tell me you've never heard of the Mockingbirds! The what? They're the hottest new craze! Cute little birds dressed up like rough and tumble delinquents! I've never heard of them, but this certainly, certainly seems to matter to you! The best part is, nobody knows who made them. They just started showing up around town, and soon enough, they'd won everybody's hearts. The story goes that they're made by some anonymous artist who covertly leaves them behind in specific locations. No one knows when or where they'll show up next. They're basically an urban legend of, of sorts. To think one would turn up here of all places. This is a good sign, I'm sure of it. Oh. Well, that's nice. <laughs> okay. Zoom in on Chimpkin. Important Chimpkin. Television. Whoa, it looks so warped. A color television. Father bought one as soon as it hit the market. He likes to have the latest gadgets. Unlike the latest models, there's no remote control. We've had it for a long time. Back when it was new, we all gathered around it and marveled at it as a family. But with father and my husband being away so often, it quickly fell into disuse. Clock. The swinging of the pendulum echoes through the room. It feels livelier than usual with Richter here. Usually it's just me. We got a fax machine? A fax machine. It can send images to other places along the telephone network. <laughs> I don't really know how it works. Most houses don't have one. I rarely find a use for it. The telephone. This mansion has a private line. Ooh. Chandelier. The lights. The chandelier is the only thing in here that's my choice. It's my favorite part of the room. Fascinating. Let's think. My heart's still racing. This is it. My chance. At long last. Does this woman actually live here? Yeah, it, it said that she's the housewife. And the thing is, earlier, or when I say earlier, I mean last time, Shogo initially meeting her, Harue, did say that she seemed like super rich. Like she had an air of um, elegance or something about her. I think it's just that the men in her life are kind of in charge of all this shit. Oh, here's the memory. Red, red, red. Everything is dyed crimson. My home is burning to the ground. It's hot. So, so hot. I must call for help, but I cannot speak. My throat must be burned up from the smoke. No, I think I'm already on fire. That's right, I'll just use the clappers. Clack, clack. Is anybody there? Clack, clack. Why is no one coming? I'm gonna burn to death. How did it come to this? Oh, right. Her. It must be the work of that vixen who appeared suddenly and enchanted my lord. That witch. Those hauntingly cold eyes had my lord dancing in the palm of her hand. Perhaps I was also taken in by her. How many innocent people did I lure in under orders? This must be karma. The sound of a heavy bell. It feels like my head will split open. Ah, right, the evening bell. That must be why nobody can hear the sound of my clappers. I've got to do a louder. Clack, clack. Oh my fucking god! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty! I could have just read it right here. I didn't- I got so distracted. <laughs> Approach the net, a bottom shelf- Okay, so at least there are hints. A bottom shelf surrounded by darkness, jackpot, late at night on the way home, look up at the first house, among the morning green, before hearing the history. In the bright garden, if you won the lottery, 
Wait until you feel like yourself again. Detectives and private eyes. A ringing telephone booth. The excited detective. Waiting at the entrance. In a park where sparrows sing. Waiting at the intersection. On a bridge pillar at night. A unique looking playground. Revisiting the park at night. Okay. The seven mysteries and 20 stickers of Hanjo. Why didn't they fucking start with that? Now, now I'm in. Now I'm in. Fully. BRB no race. All right. Let's look at him, a Richter. A private investigator I hired. A friend told me about him. They said he's not very well known, but he's good at what he does. When I first visited his office in Ota City and saw how he dressed, I could hardly believe he was a detective. But after talking to him for a while, I changed my mind. He says some strange things at times, but he seems like the reliable sort. Why did two- hang on, why did two files? Oh, because one of them was probably the city, right? Oh no. Azur Heron Agency. Richter Kai's private investigation firm in Kamatsa Ota City. Originally, Kai thought to give it a simple name like Kai's Detective Agency, but upon hearing that people are more likely to pick names listed at the front of the phone book alphabetically, he decided to pick a name starting with an A. Thus, the Azur Heron Agency was established. However, it is questionable whether the heron, a bird of somewhat ominous significance, is an effective symbol for attracting customers. Even his own assistant has referred to the name as confusing at best. After all, rather than an Azur heron, Richter keeps a white parrot as a pet and dresses not in blue, but mostly in white. If there was a symbolic connection to be made here, it has surely been lost on all but Richter himself. A private investigator, also known as a private eye, is a detective who operates their own agency. Although there are no formal qualifications necessary to become a private investigator, many are retired police agents or detectives due to the similarities between the work involved. At a glance, private investigation firms and inquiry offices might look similar, but they carry out different types of investigations. Inquiry offices specialize in conducting credit checks on businesses, while private investigators are generally involved in tailing persons of interest and gaining information surreptitiously. The game says birds, but wrong name was only. Extremely funny. So I guess he- what I'm learning about Richter, what we've learned immediately upon our second meeting, because Shogo met him like once, is that he likes birds. <laughs> Richter kind of a babe? Yeah, he's a spicy man. Got a great beauty mark. Got the drama. You know? Let me bring you up to speed. We were in the middle of a chat when you suddenly started spacing out. And the whole time you were grinning to yourself like you just won the lottery. Care to tell me what that was all about? Well, where to start? Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. So the haunting clapper's curse echo appeared out of nowhere. Told you how to perform the rite of resurrection and gave you the curse you'll need to do it. Have I got that right? That's right. So it's all real. Honestly, I still find it hard to believe. But I guess I have to now. <laughs> I saw that curse don't appear in your hand myself. Ah, so they do appear. They look like a pop clean out of thin air. With evidence that clear, there's no denying that there's some supernatural force at work. Anything new? No. I don't think you quite understand. Oh? This isn't about evidence. And it isn't about belief. It's more than that. I know it's real. The moment the curse appeared, I knew everything before it even said a word. It was already there in my head, as clear as day. You just knew, huh? It was etched onto my soul, along with the curse echo's resentful memories. So I can feel it, what it was like. Dying like they did hundreds of years ago. Wreathed in flame, writhing in pain as my flesh blackens and my blood boils. I can feel it. All the agony, all the rage. It fills me with bloodlust. I think... <laughs> Sorry. I think I need to kill someone. Anyone will do. Just as long as they're carrying fire. I see. That could be a problem. You think so? From what I know of you... I was sure you'd see it as an opportunity. The stronger the desire to resurrect someone, the stronger the urge to kill. That's how it seems to me, anyway. 
Good grief. Talk about a spanner in the works. I say we take stock for a moment. Remind ourselves where we've come from and where we're going. And about that cotton-eyed Joe. That might be a good idea. Bing bong, bing bong. If the reveal is that Hadaway is really good at close-up magic, <laughs> she's just really, really good at sleight of hand. That's how she made that appear. This is what I find so weird, is I know that it's like going between different like mini chapters or, or parts or whatever in the game, but I find it so weird when it takes you out of a cutscene when, and maybe I'm wrong, but this has happened a few times where it seems like the only thing you can do next is talk to the person again. Yeah. That's what you hired me for, ma'am. To look in your son's kidnapping last year. To uncover the truth behind the abduction and murder of Shuichi Shigema. Oh yes, I remember. They never did find the one who did it. That's what I'm here about today, in fact. That's what I'm here about today, in fact. Kind of you to let me drop by so late, by the way. I've been turning over every last stone and I've come up with the grand total of... One lead. So you said. As far as the police are concerned, it's a cold case, but I've managed to make some headway. I remember. You were just about to tell me. Oh, yeah. Oh, I guess I'll look at him if I can put it here. Uh, I guess I should read this real quick, because this is Hadaway who we're playing as. Or, you know what I mean, spectating. Hadaway is a housewife who resides in a manor near Shimoku Bridge. Her 11-year-old son, Shuichi, was kidnapped and murdered about a year ago. The death was the result of a mistake on the part of the detective assigned to the case. A mistake which enraged the kidnapper and had him cut off all contact with the police, leaving no room for negotiation. The incident was covered up and Shuichi's killer remains at large, leading the aggrieved Hadaway to call on the services of private investigator Richter Kai to uncover the truth. The Shigema family came from a line of samurai who built their residence in Hanjo during the Edo period. They assumed important positions in the police force following the Meiji Revolution, thereby protecting their family's elevated status. That'll do it. Even today, many in the Shigema line work as police bureaucrats and senior police officers. Hadaway's father sits in the upper echelons of the National Police Agency, and her husband, adopted in the Shigema clan through an arranged marriage, is also a highly respected agency official. Oh, so that's why she's so tired. It's an arranged marriage. However, as her family prioritizes work above all else, it wasn't long before Hadaway's marriage grew cold. Though she wants for nothing, she is isolated from her neighbors and withdrawn from society. Seeing her son grow into a young man gave Hadaway a purpose in life, but it was cut short by the kidnapping incident. Following the incident, Hadaway spent many days in a deep depression, breaking into sudden fits of shouting and wandering around in the middle of the night. Her cheerful, loving disposition faded away, and she took to making snide remarks at her husband, which only further soured their relationship. A few months ago, Hadaway's husband was transferred to another area for work and now rarely returns home, with Hadaway left to live in the large, empty mansion alone. As a housekeeper who has been with the family for a long time, comes in to take care of all the housework, Hadaway has nothing but time on her hands. Oh, baby. Shuichi Shigima, the only son of Hadaway Shigima. He was kidnapped and murdered one year ago. His body was discovered floating in the Sumida River. Shuichi was a consci- Oof, God, Christ. Conscientious? I don't think I know how to say that after reading it. I've said it before, but I think it's gone now. A conscientious- mm, brave, A brave young boy who is <laughs> determined to protect his mother, Hadaway, amid his father's frequent absences. He dreamed of becoming a police officer and displayed diligence and an impressive sense of responsibility from a young age, likely due to being raised in an extremely strict environment. Born in the early 70s- Okay, so we know we're in like eight- like between 80 and 85, probably. He spent his days immersed in various activities and studies, including playing piano, learning the abacus, fucking nerd, taking English lessons and training in kendo. Shuichi's tendency to put other people's needs over his own meant he died without ever telling his classmates how much he longed for them all to go out on a hunt for mockingbird stickers. Sad. Richter Kai, the eccentric man that Shogo Oki ran into at Hoenji Bridge. Richter's actually a private investigator with an office in Ota City, Tokyo. After taking on a request from Hadaway Shigima to investigate the unsolved kidnapping and murder of her son, he gets caught up in the events surrounding the Rite of Resurrection. Once a police officer, Richter was racked with guilt over the police's inability to help all those in need and quit the force to start his own private investigation firm. However, his soft-hearted nature leads him to take on too many cases and has put his office in dire financial straits. 
How he is still in business is a mystery, with some whispering that a wealthy patron is keeping him afloat. Richter studied alongside Detective Jun Edio at the police academy. Somewhat surprisingly, given his outlandish clothing and mannerisms, Richter excels at covert investigations and tailing his targets. He proudly refers to himself as an investigator extraordinaire, though that only ever succeeds in impressing himself. Richter's biggest source of happiness is nuzzling his pet female albino parakeet, Ernestine, which he keeps in his office. He also enjoys collecting Mockingbird stickers, a popular line of merchandise featuring birds inexplicably dressed like delinquents, and can be frequently sighted searching around town for them. While out and about, Richter typically leaves the office, and more importantly Ernestine, in the care of Amamori, a junior high schooler who volunteered to assist Richter after being involved in a previous case. He's very covert. Why does it say curse echo none? That's sussy. That's what it says for everybody. There's all there's always a question of the curse echo. It's either question marks or or what it put down. Part of it's because that's what it was when Shogo first met Richter. Spin below delinquent birds, I collect them. You see, you seen it yet? There's one right there. About the investigation. You know, we still need to figure out exactly what you want me to do. Tell you what, why don't I tell you what I found and then we can make a decision. Hi Ambrose, maybe. Alright. We finally finished the tutorial, you know. Oh, so for some reason this one is not a check mark. I guess we'll go back. I suppose there's not much point going over the kidnapping itself. No, I'm very familiar. Then I'll leave that for the files to cover and just confirm a few things about the case. The police trace the culprit's calls back to, let's see here, Northern Oyoko River here in Sumida City. That's quite a wide area. That's right. In the end, they never managed to nail down exactly where the calls were coming from, but it was almost certainly the same location that Shuichi was being held captive. Since, since Shuichi's voice could be heard during the killer's calls. Northern Oyoko River is quite a distance from Sh Shuichi's normal school commute. Factoring in that he was seen at school but went missing before he arrived at his house, it's likely that he was abducted by a car on his route home. Maybe, but... Exactly. Shuichi was a clever boy. He never would have gotten into a car with a stranger. That's right. I was very firm about that. I know he understood, too. I even saw him warning the other children. It's possible that they forced him into the car. The only issue there is there weren't any witnesses to the kidnapping. You can't bundle someone into a car with that many students around and not be noticed. But nobody came forward to say they saw anything suspicious. So, did they target him at some other time, or somewhere away from his usual route? Both of these seem a little far-fetched. Which raises the question, how did the kidnapper pull it off? The police never managed to find an answer. In the end, they decided that the kidnapper must have just gotten lucky. Well, why not turn the problem on its head? <laughs> oh, good luck with the skunk tank, everybody. The only thing that makes sense to me is if they were somebody that he would have a reason to trust. A teacher, perhaps, or a relative, or somebody else that he knew. But all of the adults Shuichi knew had alibis. The police checked them all thoroughly. They did, huh? No one throws numbers at a problem like the cops. But what if it wasn't someone he knew, or rather... What if the culprit disguised themselves as a police officer? <laughs> that would explain why he didn't find them suspicious. The Shigima family has close ties with the police, after all. He would have had a reason to trust them. You might be right. Surely, that couldn't have... Well, there's a problem with the theory. You'd be surprised how much police officers stand out. That's sort of the point, after all. They're meant to be a visible deterrent against crime. But there's another interesting little bit of trivia I happen to know. When you ask people to imagine someone suspicious, nobody pictures women or children. Even kids who've been warned about stranger danger often subconsciously expect that danger to look like an adult man. Besides, Shuichi was the sort of boy who wanted to be a police officer when he grew up. He must have had a very strong sense of right and wrong. That's right. Wait, surely you can't mean... Now you're getting it. If, say, a young woman approached Shuichi asking for help, what would he have done? 
<laughs> if someone like that said they were lost and asked him for directions, would he have gotten into a car? He might have. Not the... Broom. My husband always told him that a man had a duty to watch out for women and children. You could certainly argue that kind of attitude is outdated nowadays. But if Shuichi believed it, then we might have something here. Then you think the culprit was a young woman? But it was a man's voice on the phone. She might have been an accomplice, or maybe she didn't even realize she was being used. If anything, that would explain why she hasn't come forward. She herself might not realize she had anything to do with the case. Ads are about to start, so I'll sit here for a second. <laughs> what if the kidnapper dressed up as a private investigator with a white hat, though? Hmm, make you think. He got caught by systemic sex sexism. You hate to see it. It could be. It could very well be. He thought he was being chivalrous, perhaps. I'm sure this was very mind-blowing in the hypothetical 80s that the, that the game takes place in. Because this is a more common concern nowadays, I feel like. Like, I don't know if y'all have heard this, but I, I've been hearing this a lot more lately in like the past two years. Of people being specifically like, no, don't help ev anybody, especially not women. Because it's, like it's like a trafficking thing, which is not... Which is bad, I have to say. I think it's really bad. But I wonder if in the 80s this was like... <gasps> Toxic femininity is requiring aid at some point in your life. Female traits. <laughs> like a requiring help ever. <laughs> uh. I don't know what to do while ads are on. I thought I needed to get more water, but I didn't. I still help people. If someone wants to kidnap me, they just have bad taste. <laughs> it's spooky scary, and I imagine it would be even spooky scarier in the 80s where not everybody has a smartphone in their pocket. Mm. Oh, let me make sure that this is real quick. Yeah, I thought so. I love it when, when the music chooses to get intense. I think someone said earlier they, they were like, this Ace Attorney ass music. <laughs> it's a weird time for it to get this intense. I feel like, I feel like the game has not shown a huge breadth of musical tracks yet, which is kind of odd. It feels like it's either no music or very intense music. And not a lot of in-between. Which, eh. Even the, even the dang main menu song is wildly intense for no reason with choruses of shouting children as part of the song. I don't know. It gets you in the mood? I guess so. The mood for murder, but I'm here to investigate and be scared by t paranormal things before I'm here to murder. These all sound like you're gonna get murdered. It's really a weird vibe. This lady super kills people? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Or at least she wants to real bad. She, she has nothing left to lose no more. And everyone she knows and loves is a cop. So like, what the fuck is ever gonna happen to her? She's... Let me read it again. She's from a, a family of former samurai who are now all in important bureaucratic police positions. She does not give a fuck. Yeah. Uh, the Shigama family came from a line of samurai who built their residence in Hanjo during the Edo period. They assumed important positions in the police force following the Meiji Revolution, thereby protecting their family's elevated status. She could do anything. 
You think her husband had a mistress who did it? The kidnapping? Oh. That's a big swing, Zazie. That's a big swing. The transition from samurai to cop is so depressing. Well, no, a samurai is a cop. Like, just to be clear. It's very, it's very straightforward. Or he did it with the mistress. Right, right, right. Hired people. Had people working around. Tamur, thank you for a gift sub to Zazie. Zazie, enjoy your gift sub. Enjoy your less question mark, no ads question mark, hopefully. Please. Please. Not please. I try to say pray and please at the same time. New phrase. Um, but yeah, thank you very much, Tamur, and I'm sure Zazie will have a good time. Yeah, A cab, all knights are bastards. Right, right, right. A, a samurai is just uh, is just a landlord who's also a cop from the old tiny days. That's the tragic thing. All of the like '80s era weebs have tried to make us believe that samurai are super cool, but they are cops. <laughs> a landlord with a sword, the worst kind of landlord. Yeah, militaristic landowning class. Damn, media has lied to me about samurai, but you learned something new today. Honestly, I only know that from Kage, for the most part. Kage Naga. Um, and was could, could I have a shout out for Kage Naga, please? Um, one of my favorite people on Twitch, uh, Kazuma Hashimoto. You might have read some of his stuff in like Polygon or something like that. And uh, yeah, he is a, a, a gay trans dude, Japanese dude, and a, a strong anti-imperialist games critic. So I've learned a lot from him, and I also think he's very nice and fun. And that is how I know that bit of trivia, because I'm not much of a... What's the word? Like... Japanese cultural, like, in interested uh, person. Not in the weeaboo way, not in the historical way. Um, so yeah, most of that I've just, like, learned through osmosis from hanging out in his stream and stuff. But the samurai, not good. Ninjas, however, I believe still are, are pretty cool. Because their whole kind of deal was being like, fuck a samurai. Correct me if I'm wrong. We love to see it. It being anything Kage writes. Exactly, exactly. Alright, let me get back onto the game here. Are we, are we... I guess we're still going down the kidnapping line here. So the question is, did anybody see Shuichi speaking with a young woman on the day of his disappearance? More or less cool than pirates? Hmm. I think that one's tough. I mean, here's the thing. A pirate has the natural association of a sea shanty. It's hard to beat. It's hard to beat a sea shanty. Pirates are a tits out gender. That's also true. A pirate loves to have their tits out. For me, pirates are pretty, pretty difficult to beat. So it is going to be pirates for me. But I could see that being taste based. Japan probably had ninja pirates. Ah, oh, you're probably right. It is. It is quite the archipelago. Hmm. Now that's something to think about. See, what I said about people's biases, that goes for witnesses, too. And I figured that maybe if I started asking new questions, I might get some new answers. So I spent my day asking around Shuichi's school route, seeing if anyone had seen something. And one man thought he had. Do you mean... he saw it happen? Well, I can't say for sure yet. It turned out he wanted something from me, so he asked if we could talk in private. Swing. Several hours earlier. Alright, this should do. There's no one around. We can speak in confidence. Um, excuse me, what was your name again? Oh, this hair! Jonouchi. Got it. Well, Jonouchi, I'm all ears. Just so we're on the same page. You're a private detective investigating Shuichi Shigema's kidnapping. Do I have that right? Of course. What else do I look like? How should I know what a private detective looks like? Oh, forget it. Look, I'll tell you straight. My life is in danger. I need your help. Uh -huh. You'll excuse me if that caught me a little off guard. Let me ask you straight. Who is trying to kill you? A student called Michio Shiraishi. Interesting. A schoolgirl, eh? Sounds like you've been naughty. Ugh, it's nothing like that! That girl! She's a murderer. 
I'm the only one who knows, but I saw what she did. Michio Shiraishi. I saw her kidnap Shuichi Shigima. Come again? I saw her talk to him on the street and lead him away. I didn't think much of it at the time, but then he went missing. She murdered him. I'm sure of it. Or at least she's got something to do with it. That's what you're here for, isn't it? Then you can't let her get to me. If that's true, you've been sitting on some valuable information. Why didn't you tell anybody? Well, you see... If you can't explain that, I don't have any reason to believe you. I, I couldn't! She, she told me she'd kill me if I spoke a word. You're telling me a schoolgirl school had you scared for your life? So you've been sitting on that all this time. And you think she's coming for you now that you've spilled the beans? Yes, that's it. Exactly. I'm begging you, don't let her get me. Arrest her. I'm telling you. She's a demon. Well, you seem to believe what you're saying. But it just doesn't add up. How could a schoolgirl have a fully grown man so terrified? You don't know what she can do. She'll... she'll curse me. Curse you? I'm sorry, but you're losing me here. It's true. Her house. It's... Ah, oh, forget it. Why do I even bother? You seem dubious enough to believe me, but I should have known you'd never understand. Enough. I'll find someone else to help me. Hey. Hmm. Does he know that PIs can't arrest people? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if he knows that, but he pro you know, he's probably doing shorthand. Not, well, I need you to continue your investigation and lead you to the fact, well, you know, it's probably just tip off a cop, say that she's dangerous, get arrested, whatever. Go hire a gun as a personal bodyguard. This is, this is Japan in the 80s. I think getting a gun must have been pretty difficult. And that's about the long and short of it. I can hardly believe it. At the time, I thought his mention of curses was just crazy talk. But I'm starting to see that there might have been more to it. Then, if we can just find that girl... Curse or no curse, if she was with Shuichi on the day of the kidnapping, then there's a good chance she knows something. On top of that, I did some digging on the man I spoke to. His full name is Kohei Jonouchi. He's a teacher at Komagata High School here in Sumida. A teacher? Then the schoolgirl... Is one of his students? I think that's very likely. <laughs> the Yakuza series lied to me? I feel like there's not a lot of guns in Yakuza. Like, overall? For for a game about gangsters. Well, there's an Aurorus in chat. Three balls you want an ice uh, brontosaurus. I got a gun from a vending machine that came once. Well, that's your fault for thinking anything that happens outside of a cutscene in Yakuza matters. I'm afraid. I hate that this this is always ever present. The think, even though it's been the same thing for this entire time. Ugh, bugs me. At last, we've got a lead. Hopefully, it'll get the breakthrough we're looking for. Okay. That's good. You know, we still need- uh, there's the same thing as before, so we just go through the other dialogue trees until he actually says the thing that matters and the little check mark appears. The Rite of Resurrection, huh? I read about that in a cult magazine the other day. Apparently some old book showed up recently with all the gory details. And they say that the Rite can be found somewhere in Hanjo. I remember the first time you told me about that. It felt like... like my prayers had been heard. Like I had hope, real hope, for the first time. Ever since that awful day, I've wondered. What if I hadn't sent him to school? What if I just paid the ransom? Not a day goes by when I don't think that if I'd done something differently, Shuichi would still be alive. You can't blame yourself, ma'am. It was the culprit's fault, not yours. Though I know that won't help any. Grief is funny like that. I'm guessing that's why you're after the right. Guess I didn't need to ask. It's written all over your face. I can tell how much he meant to you. But, and this is a big but, if this right is the real deal, using it will mean killing someone and stealing their soul. Is that a problem? 
If it comes to that, I'm afraid I'll have to stop you. Oh, that's a shame. A shame, huh? That's all? I thought, if I'm going to be competing with other curse bearers, then your detective skills might come in useful. You realize you're talking about ending someone's life, right? Don't you see an issue with that? I think any parent in my position would happily kill for a chance like this. That's so, is it? Dear, oh dear. What have I gotten myself into? If it makes you uncomfortable, then you won't have to get any blood on your hands yourself. I don't need you to kill the other curse bearers. I only need you to find them. I won't be party to murder, ma'am. Not even for a client. Mm. <laughs> we do have money. I feel like this is something she would say. How much can I give you to change your mind? Sorry, ma'am, but not everyone has a price. I've got my policies and I stick to them. I see. I didn't realize you were so stubborn. Let me say, though, it's not like I don't get what you're going through. As long as you're not killing anyone with your own hands, maybe I can help you out. What do you have in mind? Well, how about stealing someone else's curse stone after they filled it with soul dregs? If that was all you were after, then I could lend you my services guilt-free. If the other curse bearers want to kill each other, that's their business. I'm not trying to be a hero here. I guess there's no guarantee a stolen curse stone will work, but we can worry about that later. Well then, I suppose we have a deal. Although, what if I stole a curse stone using my curse? Would you disapprove? Mm. That would void our contract, ma'am. Just warning you now. My. Mm. What about stealing someone else's hands and killing those? Mm. About my curse. Before we go any further, why don't you tell me about that curse of yours? The Haunting Clappers, was it? That's one of the seven mysteries of Hanjo, if I remember correctly. That's right. The original story did happen somewhere near here, I think. I'm sure I remember hearing that. In that case, my money would be on all the curse bearers being somewhere in Hanjo. Our first move should be to narrow them down. Some of them are bound to try and come for you first. We'll need to be ready. The curses make their bearers more willing to kill, so an attack could come from anywhere. That sounds sensible. And if I remember correctly, your haunting clappers can set people on fire, but only if they have a naked flame or a lighter on their person. Is that right? That's right. In olden times, wooden clappers were used to warn people of fire. I'm guessing it punishes those who don't heed the warning. It seems like a good curse to have. It's simple and straightforward enough to use. Although it's hard to say how it stacks up without knowing what else is on the table. Do you really think it's that good? The target can't do much to throw it off, and it has a nice long activation window. It's big that it works on lighters, too. Just slip one into your target's pocket. And say that condition were already fulfilled before they even knew you are there, they wouldn't even know what hit them. Maybe I won't have to actually use it. I could just tell someone I could, and they'd have to do what I said. Threats could work, although without any proof it'll come down to how convincing you can be. If only you could use the curse, then back out at the last second. At the last second? What an interesting idea. I have a lighter right here, we could try it now. That's an interesting proposition. But maybe not. I'm not quite crazy enough to make myself a guinea pig. Oh, I see. You're an odd one, ma'am, if you don't mind me saying. And I don't think it's just the curse. You flatterer. <laughs> She's such a freak. <laughs> yeah, he was like, no murder, and now, uh, it's actually pretty good. Would you, would you say he's trying to figure out and think how good the other curses are by comparison? Because I think he's thinking, you know what? If if you have to kill another curse bearer, you can just... He has to be thinking that right now. Mana, how you doing? Happy birthday or late birthday. I forget if it was yesterday or today, but happy birthday. She's 
sip my water. I had lemonade earlier, which is a mistake before a stream. Just so you guys know, if you ever get in a streaming, don't drink lemonade before your stream. It'll, it'll, you know. He's like, what if I, sl what if you slip a lighter in their pocket in self-defense? Go cop mode, literally. <laughs> Uh. As for what we do next, first of all, I think you should stay indoors. Try not to do anything spontaneous or outside of your normal routine. Right then, have you decided what you want me working on? Hmm. It's time to save. <laughs> It's time to fucking save. I mean, I don't technically have to because of the story chart, but you know, you just, so you just gotta put a save down. Um, I mean, helping with the right, I don't know if it's gonna go so great. Why don't you investigate the ki I want to know more about the kidnapping, personally. That's what I want to know more than anything else. Finally. Finally, I have a lead. I need to know what happened to my son. Your wish is my command, ma'am. I'll focus all my efforts on looking into the kidnapping. Although, something just occurred to me. You can't investigate the matter at night, can you? At least until the sun rises. Could you search for the other curse bearers? <laughs> Alright, I see how it is. Well, I'd be happy to help. Odds are good that the other curse bearers are also working by night. Anyone they kill under the cover of darkness won't be discovered until sunrise. I bet they'll be trying to do as much as they can before morning comes. So, it's settled then. I'll look into the other curse bearers by night. And once the city wakes up and I can start asking questions, I'll investigate the kidnapping as well. I'll even try and find Miss Shiraishi as part of the bargain. Thank you. That's more than enough. We got him working 24-7? Now then. I should get to work. There's only so much time before sunrise. I'll call you if I find out anything new. You stay here and keep a lookout. Alright. There's no telling what kinds of curses you might find out on the streets tonight. Don't go outside if you can help it, and try to be ready for anything. I will. Well, if that's all, I should be going. God bless. I wanted to try this game, but would rather watch it, so I've been lurking while I get ready for work. Ooh, fair, Mana. I mean, like, I think like I said last stream, I hadn't even heard of it until like a day- or I think I had heard of it and I thought, oh, it doesn't have a release date, it'll come out eventually. And then like the day before it came out, I heard of it again. Like Werewolf. Richter would be so good at Werewolf, <laughs> yeah. Hi, Nardo. <laughs> what- wait, what was time a typo for, Nardo? <laughs> No doing anything spontaneous or combusted. Exactly. Is the original guy canonically dead in this timeline now? It depends on the... Exactly where in the timeline you are, but... So he's not dead yet. We know that he's dead by morning. In the timeline where Yoko isn't dead. But we don't know anything that happens in here. So I don't think we know. Hi, Azalea. Dropping body said good luck with the scaries. Thank you, Azalea. When you say good luck with the scaries, does that- <laughs> And this isn't meant as a call out. You don't have to answer this. Does that mean you're watching to not have to experience the scaries firsthand? Or does that mean uh, the stream is going to be muted and you're here to catch Pokemon? <laughs> I'm curious. Time was me typing in the wrong browser window. Me calling my own lurking self out. <laughs> Nardo, you are free to go back to lurking if you like, but welcome. <laughs> but I mean, is this timeline the one where Yoko lives? They, I don't think that they've split yet, technically. Or I think, how do I put it? Right now, the two timelines can coexist. Because nothing Haruhei and Richter have done in their timeline has impacted anything to do with Shogo and Yoko at all. Um, so it won't be until we start playing this one that they might... Um, start being different. Yeah, the pre-divergence point. Everything up until this, I know this isn't a line, but between here and here, this line right here is just set up for all the different timelines, okay? 
So once we get here, we'll figure out what's going on. I just want Yoko to live. They really got you with their non-mom death. <laughs> Sorry, Azalea. <laughs> no worries, my friend. Enjoy either way. Julie, nice person in the entire game. I'm here for the vengeful mom. I do got to catch up on the first stream, though. I missed it. Oh, no worries, Azalea. It's, pretty, it's honestly pretty slow. This is... I feel like I just basically got out of the tutorial, and even now I feel like I'm... I have now entered, like, chapter one, actually. You're curious to find out about Mio from Yakko Timeline? God, it's so- I know- listen. Japanese and English are different languages. Of course. Of course they are. I can't stop reading her name as, like, the Warner Brothers, you know? Yakko and Dot. And I feel bad. I feel mean about it. Yako's a proactive murderer, I'm here for that, but Yoko best person? Yeah, probably. Yeah, the Animaniacs, thank you, thank you. Same here with the name, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm not super interested in Tetsuo, um, but I know there are people who like a Delphin here, so I will. Well, I'm just gonna do them in order, probably, uh, for now. I think I'll actually, I'm interested to find out what happens with Harue, but because we're in the pre-divergence kind of point, I am kind of interested to just do I think we'll just run through all three of these up until right here, just to find out where everybody is. How how does everybody start the night, right? So we're gonna do that. Tetsuo Tsutsumi, Chief Inspector of the Metropolitan Police Department, first investigative decision is investigating the mysterious death of a fellow officer. He visits the scene of the incident, the former Yasuda Gardens, with his subordinate Jun Erio. They made Jun look weird in this because of the way it's distorted. 11 p.m. This is where I burned to death. Burned to death Peters. Hey boss, forensics is all done. The crime scene is clean. The other officers have all gone home. It's just us now. The park should be able to open back up tomorrow like nothing ever happened. I bet it'll get many visitors after everything that's happened. You'd be surprised. Lots of people love that kind of thing. I bet they'll be lining up to get in. Occult stuff is really popular right now. Did you not know that, boss? Sounds stupid. Well, it's not exactly rooted in science, but... If ghosts really did exist, we could just ask them who the perp is. <laughs> Somehow I doubt it'd be that simple. Oh, but you know, I've heard that high school girls are really into the spirit board thing these days. Supposedly you can call on spirits and talk to them by using a board with letters on it. Wouldn't that be something? You can try it out yourself if you're so interested. Hey, that's not a bad idea. Let's give it a go sometime, boss. What now? Stop messing around. You really think we're going to solve this case by moving a coin across a scrap of paper? Sounds like you know all about it. We've got to be open-minded. What if that's how police work is going to be from now on? Don't make me laugh. Listen up, Edio. You can't go blaming the death of your buddy on something like the occult. I don't care if it was ghosts or the occult or what. Whoever or whatever it was that did this. I'll get them. I promise you that. Well, you've got the right attitude, but we don't even know if this is a murder yet. Bias is weak in our judgment. Get too fixated on one thing and you stop seeing everything else. Aye, aye, boss. So... Now that we've finished investigating the scene, let's review what we know. Eh? Now? It's getting late. I figured we'd head straight f straight home from here. Come on. We've got to go over all the info we've gathered. And what better place to do that than here at the scene of the crime where we can soak up the atmosphere? Soak up the atmosphere? The hell is there to soak up? You must be really into this occult stuff if you get off on being in a place like this. Uh, wait. You mean being somewhere like this doesn't get your blood pumping? No way. No, no, don't turn this around on me. I'm not the weird one here. Cripes. Ugh, fine, let's get this over with. Aye, right, boss. I love cop Spongebob. <laughs> the former Yasuda Gardens here in Yokoami Chome were originally built as part of a daimyo's estate back in the Edo period. The park became city property a number of years ago and underwent extensive renovations. There's not a soul around at this time of night. Quiet doesn't even begin to describe it. Hmm. 
Let's look at Jun. Or Edio. Jun Edio, a detective in the Tokyo Metropolitan Police Department first investigative decision. His rank is sergeant. This is his first time leading a case. It's like he's graduated from rookie to newbie. He looks put together on the outside, but acts like a kid most of the time. Honestly, the force could use more people like him. I was gonna say, am I gonna just look, look down and find the crime scene? This is where the victim was found. It's... well, it's clean now. It almost feels like nothing happened here at all. But once an incident like this has come to pass, there's no going back. Not that knowing that is any consolation. Cops could use people who are cops, right? Let's think. I've got a bad feeling about this case, and my gut is rarely wrong. I knew this would be a treacherous case from the moment we were dragged into it. Oh. Let's also check our stuff. Spirit board. The bootleg ass Ouija. Due to the occult craze, divination has become popular among young boys and girls. All one needs is a coin and a piece of paper with letters and numbers written on it. Using these, all one has to do is ask a question of the called upon spirit and it will move the coin and answer. It is believed to be a tool that was adopted from Western spiritualism and molded by Japanese occult enthusiasts. Though it is considered a form of divination, the ritualistic nature of its usage can cause self-hypnosis or auto-suggestion, leading to hallucinations or symptoms similar to spirit possession. Many schools banned these spirit boards after there were several cases of students sneaking into schools at night, in addition to stories of people having seizures when using the boards. Can you use a Luigi board? I was not expecting the focus on unconscious bias in this game. I know, right? I kind of like it, though. I mean, I like what they've done with that, at least, so far. The Shigima kidnapping. A kidnapping and murder case. Oh, wait. I mean, we kind of... I'm going to skim read it just to see if we need to... If I need to read this version. Because we did have the whole thing speaking between Haruei and Richter. So let me just do a quick quick scan. Oh, I mean, yeah, okay. So it is new. Well, well I was do the whole thing. Overview. A kidnapping and murder case that took place in Honjo Sumida around one year ago. Haruei Shigima's son, Shuichi, age 11, was kidnapped on his way home from school, with the ransom being demanded that same evening. Initially, the kidnapping was thought of as a simple extortion scheme, but when it came to light that the Shigima family was closely tied to the police, and Shuichi was in fact the grandson of a senior official, it was quickly assumed that the perpetrator was acting upon a grudge against the police force. The kidnapping was treated as a direct attack against the good name of the police, and a large-scale investigation was launched that used the best equipment available to trace phone calls. This made it all the more embarrassing when they were unable to catch the culprit, losing the public's confidence. The culprit grew cocky, relentlessly mocking the police force. After three days of failure after failure, Harley reached a breaking point. Spurred by concern for her son, she resolved to hand over the ransom money as fast as possible, but her husband and father, who held the prestige of the police in high regard, refused, saying that they would not let the criminal win by giving in to their demands. This sentence is kind of fucked. Husband and father are separate here. Just to be just to be clear with the English language, this should say but her husband and her father, not her husband and father. Two different people. <laughs> just making sure that we all know and acknowledge that that sentence was written weird. <laughs> we don't know what her life is. Yes, we do. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> The increasingly frantic detective assigned to the case lost his temper when the criminal called to give an ultimatum, causing the culprit to never make contact again. Another week passed and Shuichi's body was found floating in the Sumida River. Shuichi's death could be largely ascribed to the police's incompetence, but this was ultimately covered up with stringent media embargoes. The investigation was never closed, but the case has long gone cold. Is one year a long time for a case to be cold? That's a real question, because I, 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 like I like me a true crime program. I like me a murder mystery. I feel like one year. Is it really that long a time? Like her husband and her father are grouped together basically every time they come up. So phrasing it like they are the same person. <laughs> Another via down the industry. No, that's not what they mean. <laughs> oh, I can look at the pawn separately too. We know that they are separate people. They just wrote that sentence weird. Goofy. I think if you don't solve it in 48 hours, you don't solve it. But that doesn't mean the case- 48 hours doesn't mean the case has gone cold, though. I a case isn't cold until they officially declare we have absolutely no fucking leads whatsoever. So I feel like a year's not a long time. Can't believe she was arranged married to her dad- No, right. <laughs> Here. <laughs> Turn off the stream. Have you ever seen her husband or father the same room at the same time? I think not. I haven't seen them, period, so they could be fictions of her imagination, and by fictions I mean figments. This pond, they say it used to flow into the Sumida River, 
But the river became so polluted that they cut it off. Alright, I believe we're caught up. Oh wait, um, we should probably... Just kidding, we're not. Persons of interest real quick. No, okay. We are caught up then. Make you think. <laughs> About the case. So, early in the morning yesterday... A staff member found the victim collapsed here at the park and called the police when they realized he was dead. While there were no obvious external wounds, the fact that he was a police officer and the evidence of a struggle means it's likely that this was a murder. The Sumida office sent it over to us since it involved the death of an officer and we were tasked with the investigation. What we need to do is figure out what happened and whether there was foul play involved. Thank you for the hydrate. Everybody drink water. I think that about sums things up. Man, that drowning curse really gets around. I was gonna say it looks an awful lot like a drowning curse. But, uh, boss? Yeah? Is this case really important enough to assign to someone from the investigation, di investigation division? I mean, a friend of mine died, so it's important to me, but... It's all up to the higher-ups. I'm sure they've got their reasons. Boss, you know something, don't you? It'll all become clear in time. Try not to worry about it too much. Thinking about it... The only thing we know for sure is the identity of the victim. That means there must have been something special about him, right? Maybe. Maybe he knew something he wasn't supposed to. Some kind of secret or something. Isn't that right? You're pretty sharp sometimes, you know that? If you picked up on that, you should be able to put the rest together yourself. Hmm. Well, it is our duty to get to the bottom of a suspicious death, especially one involving an officer. That's one thing that is- another thing that's kind of weird, let me just put a pin in here, is like, you'll do each about this, about that. You'll select each dialogue choice multiple times, right? But the check mark won't appear Normally you'd think the check mark will appear once it's considered done, right? But no. Once you've gone through everything, then you have to select it a final time so they can give some like like blase little end statement. We do have to investigate everything, especially if it's a cop. Now the check mark officially appears, even though that's the only thing he said. It's it's, it's kind of a weird system, I don't know. The victim is Hajime Yoshimi of the juvenile division of the Sumida City Community Safety Bureau. 27 years old, single. He mostly dealt with cases involving juveniles and education. His rank was senior police officer. You knew him well, didn't you? What was he like? Yes, we were in the academy together. We still went out for drinks together every month or so. He could be a little rowdy, but he was like a big brother to us all. He was kind and cared about his friends. For better or worse, he wasn't the uptight type of cop. The man always showed empathy and I heard he was popular with the locals for it. He treated each and every troubled kid he met with compassion. He had a great track record when it came to rehabilitation. Sounds like we lost a good one. Yep, we did. We truly did. Well, I knew being a cop was dangerous. I knew something like this could happen, but... It's never easy when it happens for real. I know the feeling. He didn't seem to care much about climbing the ranks, but he was at the top of our class. Only problem was that he took on so much, he had the most unfinished paperwork, too. I always felt we needed an unusual guy like him to help us solve all our unusual cases. Don't worry, you're plenty unusual yourself. Me? I was the most normal of my classmates. Besides, the real weirdo among us quit the academy a long time ago. There's one even weirder than you? He said freak. Oops. Hajime Yoshimi, Community Safety. Hajime was a police officer with the Sumida City Community Safety Bureau and was primarily responsible for juvenile and education cases. He held the rank of head patrol officer and entered the force at the same time as Jun Edio. Hajime was found dead under mysterious circumstances at the former Yusuda Gardens early in the morning yesterday. Once a rebellious gang member himself, Yoshimi turned his life around and used his own experiences to connect with troubled youth as a police officer. While his appearance and demeanor suggested a man who was rough around the edges, he was a passionate, loyal, and caring man at heart, looking up to looked up to as a big brother by his peers. Yoshimi achieved stellar results in his work with juvenile cases, but his consistently sloppy paperwork and less than formal attitude essentially doomed his career and had him writing formal apologies on the regular. He left behind a fiance whom he had been dating since high school. Huh? Didn't Edio just say he was single, like two seconds ago? 
I'm exaggerating. But I'm pretty positive he said single. Yeah, right here. So, <laughs> what? Is it a typo? Have you ever seen him and his fiance in the same room at the same time? All right. So, so, so some kind of mistake has happened. Cuz there's the only way this could possibly mean something else, and even this makes no sense and is not correct would be to say that he broke off his engagement right before he died. Which is not what that sentence means, but that's the only way that sentence could possibly make sense. Um, and I and I don't think is the intent there at all. So... That has to be what it's trying to say. When... Like, he left behind is like, he passed away, and so he left this person behind. But, eh. Jamor, thank you for the gift sub to Don't Focus. Don't Focus, enjoy your little sub badge. Enjoy your hopefully no ads, but we know how Twitch.tv is, so hopefully, fingers crossed, knock on wood. Uh, and enjoy your emotes. Everybody likes a little emote from time to time. Twitch.gov, right? I'm so, so sorry. Twitch.gov is not always <laughs> all that reliable with their ads. I'm gifting these to give them more ads. That's how it works. Oh, oh, I see. <laughs> Timur was the secret government agent working for Twitch.gov all along. <laughs> Who would have thought? Well, either way, I appreciate your support. As a fellow as a fellow government employee, I appreciate it very much. Thank you, Timur. <laughs> Alright, so that was I get maybe maybe it is a misprint, or maybe they just said that sentence. We'll find out soon enough, probably. Hajime was quite the bad boy in school, apparently. He ended up with the police a lot. He said the officer in charge was good to him, helped him get back on track. The reason he wanted to become a cop was to pay the kindness forward. Said it was the first time he ever took his studies seriously. That's a good story. Love that kind of thing. Makes me want to have a drink isn't in his honor. You fucking cop ass fucking cop. Please don't make fun of my dead friend. Hey, I said in his honor. You should aspire to become the kind of cop people miss when they die in the field. You say that like it's a sure thing I'll die. Besides, if I end up biting it, I'm sure you'll be the one who misses me most, boss. Eh. Come on, don't be like that. You'll hurt morale. Well, I guess how much I'll miss you depends on how this investigation goes. I can already see it. Eddie, oh! No! Why'd you have to go and get yourself killed? I have no idea what's going on in that head of yours. Yeah, that'll be a sight to see. I can't wait. You can't wait for your own death? Get it together, kid. Sheesh, you really are something. Oh, it's a pokey shop, uh, Del Focus. Everything's right except pokey shop instead of pokey store. Uh, do you think... I have a dangerous question to ask. This is a broad question. Do you think... That there is any influence on these characters... From the Twink and Mr. Krabs from Detroit Become Human? Ask yourself honestly. Cause those That's a very popular game. Especially from what I understand in China and I think also Japan. This is a, um, this is a trope, like, of, of cops. But I have to wonder. I never played that game on account of the whole self-respect thing. I have seen compilations of people playing it, Saturn. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. I've seen Super Best Friends play it. Um, and I, I, or I haven't even watched a whole playthrough. I've just watched their compilation. And, uh, you know, for a hate watch, it's wonderful. But please don't give them money. Now you may have done something. <laughs> done it something. That's right. You see what I'm saying though, right? Because they're a little too close. It's not just that it's a trope. They're getting real close. Why is my catch rate so high? I don't know two more. You and Saturn are really good at catching Pokemon. Alright. <clears throat> Thank you? I should have read that before. I, I had the thought and I, I had to get it out of my brain. <laughs> I had to say it. David Cage is a racist and misogynist, and worst of all, French. It's my passion selectivity, probably. 
Not tonight, I'm not. I'm sorry, Saturn. I probably cursed you. Something. What about the victim's family? The Yoshimi family is from Kitasenju in Adachi City, but Hajime's parents died a long time ago. He lived there all alone, no siblings or anything. I went to his house a few times for drinks. I was surprised. It's this huge, old-looking place. Like, you know, the kind of place that seems super haunted. And he lived there alone? It looked like the home of an old noble family. It was hard to imagine him being such a delinquent living in a house like that. There's that bias I was talking about. If he's from an old family, I'm sure things were complicated. That's a bias, too. He never talked about any of that, even when we were drunk, so I don't know much about it. Hmm. Oh, one more thing. Yeah? Hajime was engaged. So why'd you say he was single? He'd been seeing his fiance ever since they were in school, over ten years. They just started talking about getting married. What was her name again? He showed me a picture once. She was a beautiful woman. That's so... how terrible for her. But she may know if there'd been anything going on with them lately. We should speak to her. Yeah, his fiance may have been his only confidant. I'm sure someone at the Sumida Police Department has already contacted her. I'll look into it tomorrow. When they say single, do they mean he died alone? I don't know. No, fuck it. I don't know what that meant. I think that might have been, like, an accident. Genuinely. Uh, hey boss? I looked into the case that Hajime was running. Oh great, that's the kind of stuff I want to know. What was Hajime working on the day he died? Well, according to his report from the day before, he had two cases involving juveniles. Uh-huh. The first was the suicide of a high school girl who jumped off a building in Kamezawa last week. Ah, uh, yeah. I did hear about that. Alright. The girl's name was Michio Shiraishi. She was a second year student at Komagata High School. We could have guessed, but now I know for sure. But it seems as though Hajime had had contact with her even before this incident. Hmm. So she'd been troubled for some time. That's the thing. About a month ago, he happened to see her walking around town. She looked upset, so he struck up a conversation with her. He was sure there was something bothering her, but she wouldn't tell him what. Must have been trouble at home. That's what he thought, too. It seems he visited her home and spoke to her parents, but... They said there was no problem, so there was nothing else he could do. And now she's dead. Hmm. Then it's possible he could have prevented her suicide, then. He must have been devastated. And that's why he was looking into this Michio Shiraishi again. He must have thought that something terrible had happened that drove her to end her life. But ultimately, he never reported the findings of his investigation. I see. And you're thinking that it may have, ha have had something to do with his death. We'll have to find out what it is Hajime discovered. Right. Let's check with the Sumida Police Department about that tomorrow, too. I don't know if they're inclined to tell you, bestie. And what was the other case he was working? This one is also related to a Komagata High student. A troublemaker named Hitomi Okuda. She seems to be the leader of a group of kids who get up to no good. <laughs> Juvenile delinquency. Fun. She was pretty bad for a while. Multiple charges of destruction of pop- Oh my fucking god. She was pretty bad for a while. Multiple charges of destruction of property, assault and battery, you name it. Hajime had been working with her for about six months and she was finally starting to open up. Then, he met with the girl the day he died. Well, every school's got its problems. But I'm sure he'd be worried about how she'd get on without him. Right, just when she'd finally found an adult she could trust. She might act out without someone to help her get through this. We'll have to make sure the Sumida Community Safety Bureau does their job. But... Hmm. We can't rule out the possibility that meeting with his delinquent girl had something to do with his death. Then we'll have to interview her, too. Uh, yeah, you're right. She may have been the last person to see him alive, after all. I'll ask Sumita to introduce us tomorrow. Though, who knows if they'll actually let us talk with her. That's what we hired you for. Lay a little boyish charm on them if they need convincing. Uh, yeah, I'm sure they'd prefer me over a scurry-looking old man like you, boss. Watch it. I'm still your superior. You ought to act like you respect me, at least. Oh, I thought I was... You were? Shit, is that just how your generation speaks? You really are a new breed. Eh, it's probably just me, actually. Eh, well, don't think you can get away with that with other people. So anyways, boss. Were you even listening? We've got quite a bit to look into tomorrow. First, the two Komagata high school cases that Hajime was handling. And we need to speak with his fiancée as well. 
I believe that's it for tomorrow. My right, cause of death. As for the cause of death, we won't know until the autopsy is done. From what we've seen, though, it appeared to be some kind of acute heart failure. But since he had no record of chronic illness and had no visible wounds, it's possible that poison or drugs could have been involved. Dying in the middle of the park like that it certainly seems suspicious. Yeah, extremely not single. It That had to have been a typo slash mistake slash something left in on accident. Because... You don't say single like that to mean that. And it's not like the, the the translation of the game has been pretty good so far. Like there have been some things that maybe sound a little weird, but that is it. So it must have just been a mistake. He was single in another timeline. Right, 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 right. <laughs> I hate when the law gets in the way of helping people. To be fair, they only said it a single time. Right, but they did say it at a pretty imperative moment. Like the first thing that they said about Hajime was that he was single. They said, um, Hajime Yoshimi, 27 years old, single. Like, the perfect description, the first thing you hear about him, of who he is as a, you know, a, a victim, as someone who's passed away. So, they very clearly papered over that and been like, no, it's totally true that, um, maybe they meant unmarried? I guess so, it must just mean that they meant unmarried. Like, they, they meant single in the sense that of, like, how a tax form would ask you. <laughs> But, like, if you're in- it's not even just that he had a girlfriend, like, he's engaged. I'm just making a pun on the low- oh, I see, I see, I see. My bad, my bad. <laughs> we found signs of a struggle at the scene, as well as footprints belonging to an unidentified individual. We've got people trying to identify those prints. If we can find out who they belong to, we might be able to figure this whole thing out. Yeah, wouldn't that be nice if that were the end of it? The only things Hajime had on him were his badge and his wallet and his pockets. So we can rule out a mugging. Though there probably aren't many people who'd think to try mugging a cop as big as him. I've also heard that Hajime got into a fair few fights in his younger days. He started judo once he became an officer and rose up the ranks quickly. Sounds like the perp would have ha would have to have been pretty strong to take on Hajime. Time of death was around 11pm two days ago. Outside of the park's operating hours, of course. His body was found early in the morning yesterday. 11 p.m. the day before yesterday. What was Hajime doing out here at that time in the first place? That's the question, isn't it? The entrance to the park is closed after hours, but it's a small gate that'd be fairly easy for him to get through if he really wanted to. That would, of course, be breaking and entering, but what do you think, boss? Someone called him here. It's hard to imagine a cop like Hajime would trespass for no reason. Well, we say that. But into a park? Yeah, it's kind of weird. And since it seems like someone else was here with him, could they have called him here? Oh, that does seem likely. They must have been talking about something pretty sensitive to come here in the middle of the night. So Hajime have met someone here to discuss something in secret. And then they got into a fight? No, that wouldn't match the cause of death. There were no wounds on the body that would indicate a spontaneous scuffle. The perp must have planned something. Then you think it was meditated? That would mean... they called Hajime to the park with the intent to kill him? Well, there is still the possibility that it was just some kind of accident. Maybe the perp tried to threaten Hajime and things went south from there. We should be able to get a clearer picture once we know exactly what killed him. Right. But either way... I'm so glad you're back in the first division, boss. See, I feel like this should just ha- this should be a conversation that happens first, I don't know. Sick organ sting. Broom. I've always admired your work. You were like a god to me. You were the whole reason I became a detective in the first place. Ah, uh, yeah, about that. People have been saying that ever since you first entered the academy, but... Yes, that's because it's true. I couldn't believe you got transferred out of the first just as I was assigned to it. So getting to work a case like this now, just the two of us, is a dream come true. Happy as I am to hear that, uh... Well, how should I put it? What is it? If that's true, I'm not sure you've been showing me the appropriate amount of respect. Huh? But I do respect you. Don't tell me you're going senile, boss. That's exactly what I'm talking about, when you run your mouth like that. It's getting late. You must be sleepy. Don't worry, boss. I'll make sure we get out of here soon. Yeah, yeah, I get it. This fucking guy. 
I've been worried by your shrewd detecting- Oh, I've been wowed by your shrewd detecting abilities all day today. Oh, really? Funny. I've been wowed by you, too. On the topic of family, what's yours like, boss? So, yeah, I guess I'm just supposed to do the- Am I supposed to do them, like, in order over and over again? Like, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four? I don't know. There's no other way that these conversations really make sense. Where they're, like, they're trying to write segues into each of these options. But if you're talking about how the person died, I feel like it just makes the most sense to keep talking about that until you're done. Maybe that's just- I don't know if the way that I go through these dialogue trees is weird, but... I don't know. The hell's wrong with you? Prying into my personal life all of a sudden. It's just, I've never heard you talk about them or anything. Oh, are you single? Shut it. That's none of your business. Well, ever since I joined the force, I've been thinking. The department really pressures young officers to get married. I wonder why that is. You don't say anything like that, though. How should I know? I caved to the pressure myself and got married 20-some years ago. Huh? So then... God, you're relentless. She took our daughter and left four years ago. Thanks for reminding me. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't believe she'd give up a guy like you. Eh, I was never home much. Too focused on work. I'd come home late only to get called right back out again. Plus, being a cop is dangerous work. I don't blame her for getting fed up with it all. How sad. Especially when you're out here putting your life on the line. Oh, is that why you transferred out of the first? It was already too late by then. You better be careful, Edio. You say that, but there's not much I can do, is there? That's the nature of our job. There aren't many who can really understand it. Not unless they're involved with police work themselves, or related to someone who is. But wait, you have a daughter, boss? You really think I want to talk about her after all that? Have some sense. Come on. I promise I don't mean this the way it sounds, but how old is she? Jeez, you don't know when to quit, do you? At least try not to look so intrigued. She's... Well, she's a bit rough around the edges. I think most men are intimidated by her. Last I heard, she's living by herself and going to college. Wow, a college student. Men love an educated lady. Stop that. What kind of cop are you making baseless assumptions like that? She's living on her own, though, huh? You must worry about her. Worry? I don't even know where she lives. Oh, she hasn't told you. Probably because she knows you'd follow her around everywhere. I would not. I don't think. Come on now, we both know that's not true. Listen here. You may look like a mean old man, but you sure have a soft side. What? Is that supposed to be a compliment? I can't keep up with you. We're done talking about this. I guess puffy sideburns, yeah, they're funny. Hi Vash, I've been watching the background for a while and I'm in love with the dynamic these two have. What are you, gay? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> hi Vash. <laughs> I had to do it. I was already curious if I need to pick up this game now, yeah? Interesting. I mean, they do have a fun dynamic. It is really funny. <laughs> I know you, Vash. I know you. <laughs> Gay is only okay, Iowa. Hi, Percy. Look, I said earlier that they feel like they feel like they were influenced or in some ways descended by Twink and Mr. Krabs from Detroit Become Human. And I don't necessarily mean that as an insult. I can see why people like that dynamic so much. How did you know? <laughs> Alright, we'll do... This might be the last of this? Oh, that reminds me. If you got married 20 years ago, it must have been right around the Najima murder. You know your history. Yeah, that happened a year or two after our wedding. You were the one who arrested the killer, weren't you? We studied that case at the academy. I was only in elementary school at the time, but I still remember people talking about some dangerous criminal getting arrested. All that was just... Cracking the case, finding the guy. It was all just happenstance. I'd really rather not talk about it. It was a disturbing case. This f mm. Mm, so disturbing. <laughs> did it not make your skin crawl when you learned about it at the academy? It did. We were all terrified. Sounds about right. No one could believe that such a mild-mannered man could have committed such a terrible murder. If we had overlooked one little thing, we may never have caught him at all. I think I remember hearing there was only one charge brought against him in the end. That's right. We didn't have the evidence I knew there w Oh, we didn't have the evidence. I knew there was no way such a meticulously planned crime could have been there first, but... 
We may have stuck Fumichika Najima in his cell, but it was no victory. He always had the upper hand. Kind of like the Joker. Have you seen the movie Joker, Edio? And all the damage he did to everyone involved? Especially the victim's classmates. It's already been 20 years, huh? God damn it. This is why I try not to think about it. I'm sorry. Alright, ads are coming up and I am super thirsty. Um, so I'm gonna go grab some water really quick. Hello, and or welcome back. And two more, thank you for the gifts of the spiny. I think Spoonblow was just on their way out as you did that, but I'm sure that they'll appreciate it when they notice. Hopefully less ads. Definitely an emote badge, definitely emote access. <laughs> Man, Edio is so dumb and kissable. I think Edio just does is just doesn't have good social skills. He seems pretty smart. At least that's what Tsutsumi thinks, and he's a smart detective man, so... A little biased, a little young, a little disrespectful, <laughs> but pretty smart. But yeah, I know... A few of the characters have this face where they're like, hmm... Like, they're, they're pursing their lips really hard. Edio does it the most, and his is the most distinct. But they had to think, this... The artists had to be thinking, oh, what a cute face I'm making here. Like, certainly they designed Edio, at least partially, to be like... Appealing to the boy likers. Certainly. If Edio was British, would he be Chedio? <laughs> Chidio? <laughs> Never played a Minecraft, eh? That's a sad world to live in. And not one I want to live in. Also, I'm sorry about your ISP, Ambrose. I just saw. <laughs> I just saw. Um, I was gonna say, let's go through the files really quick, because I was gonna say this murder must be in here. What's so fucked up about this murder? I'm kind of scared. A sad but spherical world. That's true. A lumpy sphere, but a sphere. ISP. I'm so pissed. <laughs> Very good. Alright, the Najima murders overview. A notorious case from over two decades ago involving the murder of a female high school student. It first came to the attention of the authorities when part of a human left hand was discovered floating in the Sumida River. Testing revealed it to belong to a missing female high school student. As it appeared to have been severed deliberately, the police launched a murder investigation. A large-scale search of the river was organized, but the highly polluted state of the water made this impossible. Visibility was poor, the stench was intense, and the divers quickly fell ill. They succeeded in recovering only the victim's head and what appeared to be part of her leg before the search was called off. At the time of the incident, the Sumida River was as polluted as it had ever been. Neither fish nor, s nor shellfish could survive in it, eventually causing the annual fireworks festival to be called off indefinitely. Over the course of the search, the police discovered a number of unidentified human bones. This caused a stir among the public, as several other young women had gone missing in recent years in the Tokyo area, and it was feared that they may have fallen victim to the same fate. Forensic technologies at the time, however, were not advanced enough to determine the identities of the deceased, and so the police were unable to open any inquiries. Due to the overwhelming lack of circumstantial evidence, the investigation ground to a halt until a hitherto unrelated individual came to its attention. During a questioning about a separate incident, Fumichika Najima, a 36-year-old shop owner with no relation to the victim, divulged details about her that had never been released to the general public. An investigation into this background, into his background was conducted leading to his arrest. Najima testified that he had snatched his victim from the street and confined her in the underground storeroom of his shop which also served as his living quarters. He chose her for no special reason but simply decided she was an opportune target on seeing her walking alone at night. After keeping her locked up for several days, he restrained her, sewed her mouth shut, and severed her fingers and toes with a box cutter while she was still conscious. As she screamed silently behind her sealed lips, he prece proceeded to... There's a verb missing here. It must be cut. He proceeded to cut her wrists, her ankles, her elbows, her knees, working his way inward slowly and methodically. His victim constantly wavered in and out of consciousness. Her ordeal continued until she died of blood loss. Najima dismembered the rest of her body and disposed of it behind his home in the Sumida River before cleaning his storeroom and returning to his everyday routine as if nothing had happened. The brutality of his action shocked the nation when they were eventually reported. Once apprehended, Najima readily divulged the details of the murder, but was less willing to explain his motive. When asked, he would only break down in tears, saying, I don't know what came over me. I know it was wrong. In the end, the police could extract nothing more from him than expressions of remorse. 
Although the efficiency of his method strongly suggested that he had committed similar crimes in the past, no corroborating evidence ever came to life. To light, even. Najima was sentenced to life in prison at his first hearing. The sentence was imposed with no appeal from the defendant. And then notes on Hajime Yoshimi. Summary, body found at former Yusuda Gardens. Estimated time of death two days prior at approximately 11 a.m. Uh, huh? They think he died 12 hours after he got there? Cause of death, acute heart failure, cause unknown, signs of a struggle found at the scene ever as a witness underway. Body discovered by groundskeeper, currently investigating the fiancé of the deceased. And two female students from Komagata High School that the deceased had contact with as persons of interest. The curse of the missing vowel, or verb, if your brain isn't goo like mine. <laughs> if it were severed accidentally, they'd let it go, I guess. I guess. Well, I guess because... Yeah, I'm not entirely sure what that means. My first thought, and I think this probably is not correct, but they, they think that, you know, she lost it in, like, a fishing accident or something like that. They're like, oh, it's just a hand. Lotus Loves Mysteries is incredible branding. Thank you, Dull Focus. That's the nice thing about my username being Lotus Loves Lotus, is Lotus Loves Lotus can be the stuff that's just me, and then Lotus Loves, insert term here, can be everything else. Like, the ASMR is Lotus Loves ASMR. Easy. I think mysteries... The, the problem is that Lotus Loves is a ten-letter preamble. So I know that Lotus Love Mysteries would unfortunately be too long for, like, most things. Probably not Twitch, because you can get a fucking long name on Twitch. But, like, Twitter's name limit is, like, 15 characters, I think. The thing is, I love me a mystery. I love me a puzzle. I love me a moida. But I don't think I do enough moida-exclusive things to make it its own thing. This is just part of who I am. L2 Mysteries. <laughs> That makes it sound like I play, like, fucking video games or something. Like, L2 on a controller? And that's lame as fuck. <laughs> about the occult. So, all this occult stuff. Have you heard about it, boss? Lotus loves clues? That is pretty cute. And it even ends in S like everything else does. It's even five letters. You might be awesome, though, focus. The third more menacing, a lesbian. Also, real quick, there's a Pelipper in chat if you want uh, a big pelican. Throw your balls now, water flying type from uh, Hoenn, Gen 3. I think it's pretty cute, but in a goofy way. It's a goofy Pokemon. I'll write Lotus Loves Clues down on my master list. <laughs> I'm trying not to splinter myself into too many like channels or accounts or anything like that. But it's cute. <laughs> I'll probably use it for something eventually, right? What are you talking about? This Rite of Resurrection thing that everyone's talking about. No, not you too. I've been hearing about that shit everywhere. Oh, you have? That's surprising. Who cares what people are talking about? It's got nothing to do with our job. But don't you think the occult stuff with this case feels, I don't know, realer somehow? The whole thing started right here in Hanjo in Sumida City, so I thought that maybe... Cut it out. Nothing good can come of getting involved with that right of whatever, that record of fates. Sounds like you know all about it. Boss, are you secretly into the occult? Stop that. Seriously. This isn't a joke. I get why you'd be intrigued by something called the Rite of Resurrection after a buddy of yours died, but... Bringing the dead back to life? That's the stuff of fantasy. It's not real. So don't go hoping for miracles, got it? Well, boss, I think that about does it. Right. Let's call it for tonight. I'll see you tomorrow. <coughs> oh god, what is that? Huh? Boss, what's wrong? Don't tell me you're going senile. Damn it. It was that case all along. Boss, what is it? Is there something over there? Ah! Such deep sorrow. A resentful memory is flagging in my mind. Those who deceive with falsehoods and untruths are hung up forever in eternal darkness. Kill them. Kill them. Those who spread lies. Kill them all. You acquire the power of the Cursed Stone, the Evergreen Beach. You can use it to kill those who intentionally try to mislead you. Press the Use Curse button when someone lies to you. You can just ask people fucked up questions that they don't want to answer. Ugh. A murderous impulse seeps into my soul like thick black tar. That's a good fucking curse, isn't it? Especially if you're a cop. No one wants to tell you the truth. Now, kill. 
Can you hear it, Cursebearer? You, who so strongly desire the right. Kill them. Boss? Boss! Blink, blink. Boss, what's the matter? Don't tell me you really went senile. Sorry. I'm fine. Edio. Yeah? I have some bad news. <laughs> oh no. Your senility is kicking in, isn't it? No. We've got a bit of trouble on our hands. Looks like we'll be working some overtime. We're not going home tonight. Huh? What are you talking about? Ah, you know what? That probably means back here. I probably could have lied. I probably could have died if I lied to the police, right? That's funny. Hey, honey, do you love me? Curse button pops up. Yeah, in 3D space. <laughs> in in 3D space, like <laughs> like Gary's mod. Eddie was too boy to lie, though, so he's safe. Well, the thing is, okay, so I think the only reason that I couldn't choose whether or not to curse people in uh, last stream is just because the narrative required you to kill everybody, and so you don't have a lot of control. You don't have any control over Shogo, so you just do it. I think in the future it will be an actual thing. So I assume if Eddie lies to you, you can just not do it. If the boss ever retires, I want him to open up a legal advice clinic called Sotsutsumi. <laughs> A playlist name on one of my accounts? Oh yeah, yeah. I could have a playlist of just me playing mystery games, Lotus Loves Clues. The speech. <laughs> Alright, so now let's see what's up with Yako. Oh, you know, I probably should- hang on. Is there something updated, right, that I didn't read? Yeah. Let me just read the bottom real quick. A resentful memory. Ew, tongue. Mm. He deceived us with his so-called right of resurrection. The man who tricked the people with his false dark art swings from a rope. They thought the man had escaped the previous night, but oddly enough, he was found hanging in the garden of the daimyo's mansion that morning. The man, a local named Jinkichi, was known for his kind temperament and skill in crafting Natsuke clasps. While his life wasn't always easy, he was optimistic, the type to smile through whatever life threw at him. He was the kind of man who would take care of those who didn't have anyone else to rely on. The prosperity that the ukiyo-e boom brought must have been what fanned the flames of his greed. The old craftsman was found in a miserable state, as if sentenced to some cruel fate. Perhaps he'd ended his own life, unable to bear the weight of his crime. But dead men tell no tales, and the people thought of him as a, ba as a bad man, <laughs> as a bad man, even in death. He hung there for days, till his neck stretched horrifically, a visage of pain still etched on his face. It was clear he must have struggled greatly as he died, his flesh marked with dark scars with a rope wrapped around his whole body. The beech tree's leaves do not fall, and neither did the man's body hanging from it, as the mansion's owner was not at home. Another unfortunate event. The people held their tongues, fearing divine punishment, but the rumors persisted nonetheless. Mm. Yako Sakazaki, 12 a.m. Komagata High School. That should be everything. Oh, here we go. Okay, let's start. Ready for this, Yako? I'm ready. Okay, I'm ready. Psychic time. Yeah, it's Mio. Little pentagram. It's probably just supposed to be a star, but little pentagram. Alright, let's start. This is the spirit board. This is how we'll be communicating. First, we'll both put a finger on the 10 yen coin that's on the board. Wait, wait, that's why I... There we go. Like this? Just like that. Relax your finger as much as you can. Now for the chant. Repeat what I say, okay? Alright, let's go. Let's go, chat. Oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board, please visit us. Your turn. <laughs> this is so goofy. Spectre of the Spirit Board. Spectre of the Spirit Board. Please come on over. Please come this way. 
What if the ghost says swag 420? It could. Please visit us. Spectre of the spirit board. Spectre of the spirit board. Please visit us. Good. Please tell us if you are there. <gasps> que horror. Whoa, it really moved. Looks like we succeeded in the summoning. We can ask questions now. Right. Questions. Start with a question you know the answer to and see the response. Then, when you know your questions are being answered truthfully, you ask what you really want to know. It'd be real confusing if it answered no, cheeky. Okay, I'll start with something simple. Uh, what is this place? Oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board, where are we? H. I. G. H. S. C. H. Oh. Oh. Hell, high school. High school, that's right. The answers don't seem to be very precise. <laughs> don't judge so quickly. Is it really you? Oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board, are you truly the Spectre of the Spirit Board? No? It said no? Is it lying? Not quite. The Spectre of the Spirit Board is just a temporary name we call them when using the board. We're actually calling a spirit with a strong tie to this place, or one of the people participating. In other words, a spirit that just happened to be nearby just felt like answering. They don't really think of themselves as the Spectre of the Spirit Board. Oh. Really? Huh. Feels like some of the mystique has disappeared. Do you mind if I still call you the Spectre of the Spirit Board? Yeah, oh. Oh. Okay. Uh, thanks. Always good to remember to say please and thank you. Wait, we said do you mind and it said yes. Should we ask? Okay, whatever. Let's worry later. What's the name of the girl across from me? M. I. Oh. Mio. Yeah, see? It even used that weird character you used to spell your name. How flattering. Psychic girl, Mio Kurozusu. Something- mm, multiple things about that were wrong. Because <laughs> originally I was gonna say like, oh that's funny because like, saying that it, it uses the wrong character, that really doesn't translate from Japanese to English, and like there's no way to do that. Unless she was gonna use like a number, right? Like M10 or something. Um, but Mio said your name to Yako when it was Mio's name we asked for. I think the game might have some typos in it. I bet. Even the teachers get it wrong all the time. I guess these paranormal beings just tend to take a liking to you. Wait, did I read it weird? I- right? The little Nancy grin. I bind you, Nancy. Yeah, it even used that weird character you used to spell your name, talking about Mio's name? Unless they're trying to say that it's Mio who asked the question because she's the psychic, so it's- I don't know. I think- I think mistakes have been made. It's okay. Huh, I don't know how I should feel about that. What is my name? I think it should know the answer to this. Oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board, what is my name? Huh? What's the matter? How strange. No. It told me no. Ah, uh, I bet it means it doesn't know. Maybe the specter of the spirit board, but it doesn't know everything. Really? But it knew your name, Mio. Is the spirit really the real deal? Yes. <laughs> it's fine. I feel like it's giving me attitude. Oh, we're gonna ask <laughs> I'll ask it again. What is my name? No. It didn't even hesitate this time. Alright, it's time to try asking serious questions. Yeah. <laughs> no! 
got these two next to each other? Be fucking serious. Okay, here I go. I'll be serious now. Yes, please. Oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board. Did Michio... Did Michio Shiraishi in our class? Who died by committing suicide by jumping one week ago. Really commit suicide? <laughs> so it really wasn't. I'm not surprised. I never believed it from the start. Now's the important part. Yeah. Oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board, did Michiro Shiarishi die in an accident? Yes. It said yes. So it was an ac so it was an accident and not a suicide. Michio. Then did she slip and fall from that apartment building? No. Huh? She didn't? What do you mean? Michio didn't die falling from the apartment building? Yes. No way! If that were true, then why was she lying on the ground like that in the back alley of the apartment building? It was an accident, but not a fall? Oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board, what happened to Michio on that day? Seems like it doesn't know the details. Mm -hmm. I cannot believe you didn't find out if this girl had a crush on you. I'm here to investigate murder, not love. Then how about... Oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board. We want to use that Rite of Resurrection to bring Michio back to life. Do you know where the Rite of Resurrection is? I wonder. Uh, huh? <laughs> Scary. I actually don't know how that didn't scare me. Usually I get scared by stuff like that. Ah! What? What is this? Stop. I'm scared, Mio. Calm down. You can't let go before it's over. Stop. I can hear in the procession. Please stop. It hurts. Ah! Such deep sorrow, resentful memories flowing into my mind. Those who hear a fool's procession shall fall into the depths of hell. Kill them! Kill them! Those who hear this sound, kill them all. You acquired the power of the cursed on the fool's procession. <laughs> Thank you, Sigmund! I forgot I had that! You could use it to kill those who hear the sound produced by the curse echo for more than 30 seconds. The effect will be negated if you are seen in that time. Press- oh! Press the use curse button to produce the sound. Now we're getting saucy with the curses. Ugh. A murderous impulse seeps into my soul like thick black tar. Now... Kill! Can you hear it, curse bearer? You who so strongly desires the right. Kill them. Bing, 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 bong. You know what, I guess I actually probably should have done more of Tsutsumi's. Because technically I was supposed to go up till here. We'll catch up. Don't kill your girlfriend. Kill your girlfriend. It's time you had the talk. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we're still in the Yusuda Gardens. Sorry, I should have kept doing this one, but I, I got myself mixed up. Okay, so let me get this straight, boss. The Rite of Resurrection really exists? And to use it, you have to kill people using the power of curses from the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo? And the curse you have is from the story of the evergreen beach that's told in this area? Is that right? Yep. Pretty much. You're quick on the uptake. You weren't your usual silly self when you were explaining, so I knew you were telling the truth. I'm never silly. 
The only thing I have trouble believing is that you're taking this occult stuff seriously now. I mean, talk about paranormal. I thought you didn't believe in any of that. It's not that I don't believe in it. My familiarity with it is why I've tried not to get too close. <laughs> are, are you just being a sore loser? Not used to admitting you were wrong? Oh, shut up and listen to me. No point in trying to hide things anymore. We won't get anywhere if you don't understand this, so listen up. Please, just listen. You don't have to keep saying it, I'm listening. We don't have time to waste. We'll talk as we walk. Hey! Hey, wait for me, boss! I'm power walking. Catch up, Eddie. This groovy ass song! Where did this come from? I get that they're 80s cops, but, but come on now. Video Goku Bridge. Uh, sorry, I just want to double check one thing. You're telling the truth, right? This isn't a side effect of your senility? It's the truth. Not like I can prove it, though. I think. Revealing the existence of a secret department is against the rules. <gasps> now I'm in. Even to a fellow cop. But this is an emergency. I need his help. I'll tell him. Any more think? Okay, just check. He's not stupid, but he sure can't be slow sometimes. Though I think that positivity of his, of his may come in handy at some point. I'm sure you already know this, but this is all top secret. No sharing it with anyone. Right, you can trust me not to. But no, I just can't believe it. I'd heard rumors that you used to be a member of a secret division attached to the security bureau. I can't believe we actually have a department called Paranormal Affairs. Yeah, I'm sure it comes as a shock. I couldn't believe it myself. I thought the higher-ups were messing with me. Really had me worried for a while there. No, this is incredible! That's the whole reason I became a cop! I was always fascinated by secret agencies and stuff. Are you serious? But thinking about it, it totally makes sense. If curses and spirits really do exist, then of course we need a special department to protect citizens from them. You seem a bit too eager to believe all this. And hang on, I thought you joined up because of me. Come on, boss, do you only have one favorite food? You can like more than one thing. Bisexual kick? Yeah, yeah, whatever. In any case, the official stance is that the supernatural doesn't exist, so paranormal affairs operates in secret. Still not sure why they stuck me there. Those four years I worked nothing but cases involving the supernatural. Okay. So, do you, you know, have it? Have what? Spirit sense, of course. Are you what they call spiritually gifted? Nope. I've never felt anything at all. Even if I did, I'd be a lightweight at best. One beer and I'm down for the count. Does everybody know this fucking thing? Oh, hmm. Huh. Is that how people in the field quantify someone's spirit sense? Like how much liquor they can handle? No, nope, that's just me. Hmm. Thought it'd help get the point across. Oh, hmm. Huh. Sorry, seems like I keep disappointing you. No, it's not your fault, boss. At the risk of disappointing you yet again, I'll tell you one more thing. Spirit sense is usually something you're born with. It's tough to develop it later on. What? So there's no hope for me? No. Say it isn't so. Of course you were interested. Well, you never know. You may have some hidden potential. I know there's a high schooler who's got so much spirit sense that she works on the front lines. I say work, but she wasn't paid because it was supposedly part of her training. Yikes. That seems like it'd be in violation of Article 69 of the Labor Standards Act. No one tell a joke because that might be a real thing. Wow, you really know the law. No comment. Even the occult field has workers' rights issues, huh? Damn, I was just going to. Everyone's allowed to say nice, but nothing else. <laughs> so, what do we do now? We've got this right of resurrection, and the curse echoes of the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. The curses being spread out around the city is uh, a bit of an emergency. Is that bad? I'll put it this way. It's like handing out guns all over town. Jeez, that's real bad. 
It is. So we need to find the source and put a stop to it before something terrible happens. Usually that'd be a job for paranormal affairs, but... I talked to them on our way here. The main team is tied up till tomorrow night. This pose. <laughs> so they told me to deal with it myself. Said it'd be fine since I have some experience. Huh? What? Then that overtime you mentioned means... Yep, you're gonna help me, partner. Alright! Let's do this. You seem a bit too eager to dive into all this. You really have no reservations working a case you know nothing about? You said this was an emergency. I didn't think we had a choice. I just tried to be logical about this, boss. You really are something. It might actually be nice having you around. Why, thank you. I will not tell a joke because it was about a child. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You continue to be correct. He's down astronomically bad. That's it, though. You were onto something with Cheerio, I know. Alright, so what exactly do we do? If these curses are connected to the Seven Mysteries, then the people who have the others should all be here in town. Right. If there's seven of them, that means there are six more out there. And we have to stop them all before they kill anyone with their curses. If we can, we should find and collect all the curse stones. But, boss, from what you said earlier, killing a curse bearer gets you closer to completing the Rite of Resurrection. Won't your life be in danger if they find out you're a curse bearer? Pretty much. We can't let that happen. Should you even be out here right now? Hiding would only be a waste of time. The mystery of the one-sided reed is associated with Ryogoku Bridge. I was hoping we'd be quick enough to run into the one-sided reed's curse bearer. No such luck, it seems. Well, if nothing else, maybe word will spread that the cops are on the lookout and people will behave. That's putting a lot of trust in whoever these other people are. But it's possible that other curse bearers with the same idea will come here. Talk to anyone who you see who seems suspicious. That means someone who may have the power of a curse. Understood. In that case... <gasps> Why don't I ask that guy who's been watching us this whole time? What do you know? There is someone there. Good luck. Hey, you there! Sorry to bother you, but I've got some questions. I'm with the police. Thanks for your cooperation. We'll be asking you a few things, Mr... Yutaro Namigaki. That's your name, correct? Uh, yes. I don't mind answering your questions. You're a detective? Did something happen? Oh, right. Lots of things have been happening around here. Like people dying. Bing bong, bing bong. The man identifies himself as Yutaru Namigaki, a 21-year-old college student. He was watching us so calmly. We need to be careful with this guy. If this were a normal case, I'd be fine letting him take the reins. But curses are involved here. I should take over. What do I think? So, what to make of this guy? Is that all you're gonna say? Yeah. Boss, let's talk to this guy. Yeah. I thought he might just say that. So, what is it you were doing here? How goes the murder game? We're learning, Zazie, we're learning. We're learning about murders. We're learning how everything's becoming interconnected with the suicide, which the ghosts say was not a suicide, of Michio, I think is her name. Ah, uh, it must be the incident at the former Yasuda Gardens. The dead policeman? I can't imagine a detective would come all the way out here otherwise. Huh? Say, Mr. Detective. Have you ever heard of the Evergreen Beach? What was my question? Hang on. <laughs> what question did I ask? Oh, what is it you were doing here now? Answer my question. I'm a cop! Answer my fucking question! How about you answer my question first? What were you doing here? I was answering your question. I was answering your question. I came here to look for the evergreen beach from the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. Actually, I was wondering if either of you knew anything about it. I didn't know or not- not here? Wait, does this mean not here? Like, this is not where the evergreen beach is? Or we're not gonna talk about this right now? 
You have all the tech slots in the world, bitch. Why are we reducing ourselves to like nine characters? I guess it's not here, it's at the Yasuda Gardens. Yeah, okay. If it's the evergreen beach you're after, you'd be better off looking on the former Yasuda Gardens than here. Oh, you know a lot about this. But that's what I thought. Detectives, you have the curse stone of the evergreen beach, don't you? Yeah. How did you know? Eddie, oh my god. You idiot, yeah. <laughs> well, that was much easier than expected. Oh, crap. Sorry. It was simple inference. I figured you would have taken the curse if you were just in the gardens. If you know that, then you must be a curse bearer yourself. I have no intentions of hiding anything. I plan to tell you from the start. Look. This is my curse stone. I believe it's called the foot washing mansion? Who needs enemies, yeah? That's right. But are you sure about this? I'm not so rash that I'd kill someone as soon as I find out they were a curse bearer. Not without talking to them first. You're the same, aren't you, detectives? You wouldn't use a curse on a normal person. Let's speak as equals. <laughs> uh, the unintentional comedy of used curse showing up is so fucking funny. Because that happens a lot. That happens a lot. However... Like... Um, um, Tsutsumi's curse is that he can kill someone who lies to him. Which means that we can always tell if someone is lying to us. But the thing is, here, here's the thing. I don't have to kill Namigaki right away, and he knows... Right, good thing we know how to handle him due to a four-hour tutorial. Namigaki cannot do anything to me. Ever again. Namigaki can't do a single thing to any character that I am playing as in this whole game. Period, full stop. He can't do shit. So I'm not really inclined to kill him until I get to a point where um, I think something actually bad will happen. Because the thing about Namigaki is that he's weirdly kind of smart. Um, and so he might know more stuff if we keep him around. Because he's a little bitch. Because the thing is, too, Namigaki can't kill me, but he can kill anyone else. Do you understand what I'm saying? The only reason that Namigaki can't kill us is because I am playing as these characters and I can turn the sound off. Nobody else is being played by a player, so we can use Namigaki to kill anyone else immediately. No matter what, as long as we're like within... As long as they're within speaking distance, we can just kill them. So there's no, there's no good reason to kill Namigaki, in my opinion. He's- he's more useful to us alive. Also, the right of resurrection for Edio and Tsutsumi? Who fucking cares? Who the fuck cares? We can revive the cop, but we can just read all- we can figure out everything about him either way, so it doesn't matter. What does his curse do? Namigaki can kill anyone who can hear his curse speaking. So, if Namigaki is talking to you, he can send his curse echo after you and it will start talking. And if you hear the curse echo talking, you just die. Immediately. Um, and so the thing is, because I'm the player, I can just turn voice- Oh shit, I didn't realize this was still at 100. I'm so sorry. The fucking VOD of this is gonna be cooked. I can just turn voices off if he tries to kill us, but no one else can do that. I thought that was the high schooler's curse. Um, their curses are very similar. Like, extremely similar. Oh, I forgot I didn't read this. Um, the Fool's Procession Curse. Omio stood atop the tall festival tower. It was her time to shine, and she was ecstatic. It had been years since she joined the troupe, but she had yet to enjoy her day in the spotlight. She wasn't particularly pretty, nor was she all that talented. As a gossip and a loudmouth, she wasn't well-liked by her peers. Some of the other girls thought of her as a teacher's pet and bullied her. I don't care about them, she thought. I'll use this chance to make something of myself. Everything was perfect. She wore a beautiful kimono and an okame mask over her face. The stage was set. The accompaniment d began. She danced with everything she had. Applause rained down upon her from the crowd. Her breathing hastened with excitement. I've got to catch my breath. That's strange. I can't take my mask off. The smell of glue assaulted her nostrils. So that's how it is. I knew it was too good to be true. Her screams were drowned out by the music as she squirmed and struggled. 
Omio is giving it her all today. We have to keep up. The crowd livened up even more. No, no, please, someone help me. She fell from the tower, writhing in pain as she begged those around her for help. The music stopped in time with Omio's heart. We'll get to that in a second, because if we look at the foot washing mansion... Oh wait, no, this would be somewhere else. Oh, but they're not in here. We haven't played as uh, Kamigami, so I don't think we have it, but that is like what happened. Yeah, we don't have all the information like listed here, but that is what his curse does. Um, how similar are they, really? I remember thinking that. Oh, right, so this one is that you have to hear the music for 30 seconds without seeing the curse bearer. Right, that's right. Hers is basically a worse version, but I think uh, Kamigami's is closer. Like, I think you have to be within the distance to be, like, talking to him to hear it, but if you hear it, you die. Whereas hers is she has to hide for 30 seconds, have you hear it that whole time, and then it'll kill you. So. Although officially called... Sorry. Paranormal Affairs Bureau. Although officially called the Tokyo Metropolitan Police Department Security Division Special Security Unit, Paranormal Affairs Bureau, it is more commonly referred to simply as Paranormal Affairs. Only a handful of people know of its existence, even within the police force. As the name suggests, it specializes in the investigation and resolution of cases involving paranormal phenomena. Since the existence of paranormal phenomena is not public knowledge, nor is it readily believed by the general population, the Bureau's activities are conducted in the utmost secrecy. Currently, there are only five members, including the Chief. The Bureau has a network of psychic contacts across the country who assist with their cases, including Mio Kurosuzu. Mm. The Bureau undertakes investigations into any suspicious stories that cross their desk, though the vast majority turn out to be hoaxes. Due to the sheer volume of cases, close-lipped, experienced detectives without paranormal abilities of their own, such as Tetsu Tsutsumi, are sometimes assigned to investigate. The current chief of paranormal affairs is a man named Kuiru Nakagoshi. He was born to a family of psychics who have been involved in keeping the world safe from paranormal phenomena for generations, and has served as Mio Kurosuzu's mentor since discovering her. Kuiru is an elusive figure. Very few have met him in person, and he is rarely seen in the office. It is said that this is because he has often been the target of curses. However, some theorize that it is, in fact, because Kuiru is not actually of flesh and blood at all. His seat in his office is usually occupied by a Nue, a legendary creature found in Japanese folklore. The Nue resembles an ordinary white's thrush and acts as Kuiru's messenger, leading to bizarre scenes of police officers earnestly reporting their findings to a bird. The term Nakagoshi case serves as a code name used to refer to cases under investigation by paranormal affairs. Mm. A lot of stuff about birds in this game. Yeah, well, you just said it too, Sarah. A lot of birds in this game. Let's speak as equal, shall we? Boss? Sure. We'd rather resolve this amicably, too. He really is a curse bearer. He may only be talking with us to try and activate his curse. I'll have to be wary of anything he asks me to do. I could tackle him and pin him to the ground, but that might have something to do with his curse. Any slip of the tongue could get us killed. I have to try and discern what activates his curse. So, what do I do? Though you're a curse bearer, so please be careful. Fortunately, I don't think he knows which one of us is the curse bearer yet. If we play things right, we should be okay. Definitely birds, but wrong names only murder game. <laughs> But before we talk, there's something I should tell you. Eh? This is my curse stone. The evergreen beach, just like you thought. What? What? Boss, why would you tell him? As for how the curse works? Boss, are you having another senior moment? If you tell him that... It hangs to death anyone who would try to mislead me. <laughs> so if you try to lie to me, the curse stone will let me know. I don't have to use it to tell. Understand? Really? That's super useful. I see. Understood. That's a pretty pow that's a pretty useful power for a detective. Now then, let's talk. Damn. It seems I've lost the upper hand. No point for petty tricks then, <laughs> I'll be honest with you. <laughs> this <is> fucking cut. <sighs> so far so good. 
see. He's warning him now that there's no point in lying. I had no idea a simple eye would set off the curse stone, though. And use curse went away, that rules. Yeah, it, ju it just shows up to tell you, like, he's definitely fucked the lying. But I assume that that means I can't use it at any other time, right? I can't use it when he's just regularly speaking. The thing is, he, he said that pretty confidently. I don't know why he doesn't just say, like, I know you've been lying the whole time or some shit like that. But I think it's still to keep the upper hand. Because this Namigaki, he, he must be one of those people who, like, um... You know, he's watched, like, a Dahmer documentary or something, and he's like... <laughs> I don't think this is accurate to Dahmer's case, but I don't give a fuck, because I don't care about those. But he's thinking to himself, like, people have successfully tricked lie detectors before, and I could do that, because I'm so smart. It must be just, like, a lie detector. So if he hasn't killed me yet, I must just... Like, and he hasn't even said that I'm lying, so I must just be able to evade it, because I'm so smart. Like, that's the vibe that I'm getting. <laughs> There's someone I want to bring back. So, I'd like your assistance in collecting soul dregs. Can't help you. Please, all you'd have to do is tell me who the other curse bearers are. Sorry, but as a police officer, I can't just look the other way and let you go. Please, if you help me, I'll let you two go as well. This is where I'm putting a save, because he... Let's see what the vibe is going to be. I'm sure that is soul drugs. No, no, no. Is that a threat? Wait, let me actually do the correct thing here. No. <laughs> the use cursing popping up every time he talks. Every time he talks, I get this feeling, and every time we kiss, I swear I could fly. It's your final warning. <laughs> My curse, the foot washing mansion. Did you really think you could escape it just by being careful? It didn't matter to me which of you was the curse bear. I'll be taking both of your soul dregs anyway. Wait, Namigaki! The foot washing mansion is a powerful curse and so simple to activate. It's ready whenever I need it. There's no escape from the voice of my feet. We can just fucking kill him again! But how does he know? Wait, wait, wait. Here's my question. Because he's trying to mislead you. So there's, there's either some other way to activate it. Or he knows that it can't kill anybody. Told you that you should have killed him? No, I shouldn't have. He can't kill me. I don't give a shit. Wait, why was the a used curse pop up with final warning? Because he knows that he might not be able to kill us, I think. I'm assuming that's why. Idiot, get out of here! Hurry! I'll find you later. What? Okay. Too late. Hear the voice of my curse echo. The voice of his curse echo? Why isn't my curse echo working? Impossible. This has never happened. Haven't you only had it for a night? What's happening? I don't hear anything. <laughs> Eddie, oh, now grab him! R right! Get his ass! Now we gotta get down! <laughs> Damn it! Boss, here, his curse stone! Good work. Give it to me. You fucking loser. You fucking scrub. You fucking bitch. Damn it. Why? What do you think, boss? Should we lock him up? I haven't even touched you! You can't consider this assault of a police officer. Let him go. All we need is a stone. Ugh, how could this happen? My right of resurrection! Give it up. The right was too good to be true from the start. I don't know what happened to you, but you'd be better off mourning whoever you lost the right way. Now get out of here. Damn it. Boo! The thing is, we still have the curse stone, huh? Not like we can use it, but you know. Phew. That was a close one, huh, boss? We'd probably be dead if he had activated his curse. Yeah, I'm not sure what, but something stopped his curse from- <clears throat> Boss, are you okay? Is having another curse don't hurt? Yeah, the curse from this one is flowing into me too. Oh no. I saw what activates the curse of the foot washing mansion, and the resentful memories bound to it. Ah, I see. I always thought this was one of the stranger of the seven mysteries. Now I know why. This sure is something. Wait, I forgot why it is. Well, maybe I'll- sorry, let me not back up. What did you see? Let's save that for later. All you need to know for now is that it's a particularly powerful curse. We're lucky we took it from him quickly. Phew. 
Yong. Kills by crushing one who hears the command wash. Which is what the ghost says. Okay. She was an accomplished on Myoji. Alas, she did not use her talents for the good of the world or the people, but for her own selfish pursuit of beauty. After a fierce battle, the woman dragged herself through the streets. It was like something had gnawed away at her body. Will I die? I've already obtained what I needed, as long as I have this. Suddenly, a terrible realization dawned on her. Her legs wouldn't move. She fell to the ground. What was happening? Surprised, she looked down. Her foot, once so beautiful and delicate, had grown ulcerated and rotten. He got her. She was on the verge of death and covered in filth to boot. Crawling to a nearby house, her breath caught in her throat. The curious residents opened up, but recoiled from what they saw. My foot is so filthy. Someone please, quickly. The woman expired while mumbling something unintelligible, and so ended the life of a woman consumed by evil. Well? Not a rogue ancient supernatural detective. <laughs> That's where the story comes from. Oh, I thought Anmyoji were like uh, like sorcerers, right? Like wizards? Well, that makes one stone. Where do we go now? We'll visit all the places associated with the mysteries while it's still dark out. I mean, we have to do that all over again? No player on all is aggress uh, aggressive as him. Wait, hang on. I have to read one more thing. Really quick, really quick, really quick. Kills by crushing one who hears the command wash. So I think we can send it after s one specific person, but my concern would be that we accidentally kill Edio with it. But I think we have to choose who to murder, so it should be fine. They say one. They, these all say one, I think. So I don't think we can kill Edio on accident. Unless that's just it being phrased that way to sound like fancy, you know? But we'll see. People will do crazy things to bring back someone they love. It seems that the hatred the cursed stones are imbued with makes people more willing to kill. Really? Then what about you, boss? I'm fine. I may not have any spirit sense, but I'm tough when it comes to this stuff. That's why they love me in paranormal affairs. So you are spiritually gifted after all. Alright, let's head to the next place. I was gonna say, let me go catch up with Yako first. Well, there's a Whimsicott in chat. Whimsicott is the cotton Pokemon, right? Yeah, if anyone wants little body, big wig, throw your balls now. Pretty cute Pokemon. Excuse me. I'm not really sure what the English equivalent is, but they were like religious people who knew how to deal with supernatural stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I, I think I knew that, but it's like there's usually people will use like any magical person term in English usually to translate it like sorcerer, wizard, shaman, something like that. Let's go catch up with Yako. Two things to remember. I'd say sorry that I'm like jumping around in the story, but I feel like it's more fun. <laughs> I feel like it's more intriguing this way. Like more fun, more interesting to be like, here's what these people did. Cliffhanger. Here's what these people did. Cliffhanger. That kind of vibe. I like it. One week ago, by the way, is what it said. Oh, I'm here. Hey, did you hear? Someone from our school committed suicide. What? Really? Who? I heard that. Uh, oh, I heard that. Michio from Class C, right? No way. Michio? She's been acting pretty strangely lately, but I still can't believe it. Mm. Did you hear about Michio in Class C? Yeah, she seemed like the stereotypical honor student in her first year, but she stopped showing up to class and her grades started dropping after her third semester. So she offed herself because her grades were bad? No fair. Just thinking about practice tests makes me want to die too. All anyone cares about is test scores and grades. Que fail. Did you know? 
I heard Michio's mom remarried last year. They say her new stepdad is a total jerk. Really? How so? Like, he'd peek on her while she changes and couldn't keep his hands off her. I even heard he's an ex-con. If she resists him, he gets violent. That's so scary. No way. I couldn't take that. I'd probably think about killing myself too if I had to deal with someone like that at home. The rumor mill's getting wild. That's not a jerk, that is a criminal. Right, exactly. <laughs> here, Adzuka went up here. It's been one week. Very 90s anime horror though, to, to jump back and forth between the cliffhangers, Daisy. That escalated quickly? Yeah, I think this is just to demonstrate. Like, this is what the students be talking about. Yeah, I, th I think the cliffhanger thing is fun. That's definitely a good thing about the story chart. They're kids. Perhaps they don't understand that that is a criminal. We'll see. The youth don't understand. It's very sad. But the thing is, these conversations start automatically, so I can't, like, move move the camera around. Oh wait, a lot of these updated, fuck. But we're good here. How is this game like now with small feet? Cliffhanger's about. She fixed that. She fixed that. And this is all kind of like extra information, so I'll, I'll read it while the ad break is going, because I don't think it's super imperative. Rather than sitting behind a desk, Chief Inspector Tsutsumi always worked in the field as he moved his way up the police force. Behind his stern face lies a compassionate man ever prepared to help his fellow officers. That same attentiveness to his work and colleagues, however, cost Tetsuo his marriage several years ago. Tetsuo has a penchant for candy and desserts, which he tries but fails to conceal from other officers at the risk of appearing soft. He delights in buying local sweets wherever he is sent to investigate a case and would often volunteer to be dispatched to distant locations to acquire them. Oh, that's a long fucking sentence while he was with the Paranormal Affairs Bureau. He's also surprisingly knowledgeable about current trends, a trait he puts down to investigation-related research, but which is actually spurred by his wish to have something to discuss with his daughter. Oh. Just scrolling through to just make sure. Born to a relatively well-off household, Jun developed a healthy sense of self-esteem and an optimistic outlook on life. Although watching action movies and detective series as a child instilled in him a desire to help those in need, it was the sight of Tetsuo Tsutsumi, who was in charge of investigating a case Jun was involved in as a student, that truly inspired him to become a police officer. While Jun still maintains a strong respect for Tetsuo, he also gets much enjoyment out of making casual cracks to get a rise out of the veteran officer. A case Jun was involved in as a student? Curious. As an adult, Jun continued to hold on to the faint hope that the world is as he pictured it in his youth, a thrilling place in which superhuman heroes do battle against secret evil organizations. He attended the police academy with Richter Kai, who was now a private investigator. The two initially became friendly when Jun found Richter holed up alone in the reference room scouring over old crime data and invited him to go bowling, a popular pastime during this era. <laughs> Everything's connected! Right, and Michio and Yako are childhood friends. She was unable to make any progress, finding out what happened, and feeling desperate, invited transfer student Mio Kurosuzu to join her in performing a spirit board ritual. Born and raised in Honjo, Sumida City, Yako's family has owned and operated the beloved candy shop Sonoya since its establishment in the early Showa era. Despite her modest appearance, Yako is a cheerful and vivacious young woman with a sense of duty and compassion so strong that she is easily moved to tears. She's also a bit quick-tempered and quarrelsome, always prepared to stand up against those who harm her family or friends. It is possible, however, that this readiness to fight is more driven by innate love of chaos. <laughs> Yako's winning streak against arrogant boys and scraps since she, since she was a child remains unbroken and is a source of considerable stress for her mother. Owns a candy shop, loves to fucking fight, let's go. She will take you to the candy shop, her parents own it. Maybe uh, Tsutsume has, Tsutsumi has been there before. Let's look at Mio. Mio transferred to Class 2C at Komagata High School about two months ago. Although she's an extremely mild-mannered young woman, she exudes a somewhat off-putting dark aura which makes it difficult for her to form friendships. Mio has, however, found a friend in her classmate Yako Sakazaki and has begun opening up to her little by little. The truth of the matter is that Mio is the apprentice of a famous psychic. 
Possessing exceptional spirit sense, she takes on the troublesome task of surreptitiously handling spiritual disturbances that break out in schools across Tokyo before they become a problem. She transfers schools frequently as a result and thus has trouble making human friends. Human friends. <laughs> Mew has already solved an incident at Komagata High School involving a female student possessed by a spirit. Although she takes effort to hide her spirit sense, many develop an impression that Mio has a deep knowledge of the occult and the paranormal upon first meeting her, leading her to be anxious that her secrets have been exposed. The most common comment she receives is that she seems to get along well with crows and black cats. <laughs> a shared bond over murder. It's true. Aw, Michio. Michio was a second year student at Komagata High School. She was found deceased one week ago in a back alley off South Wadigesui Street, her entire body broken and severely contorted. Police determined that Michio committed suicide by jumping from a nearby apartment building. As there was no suicide note, the police based their conclusion on interviews with Michio's peers. Michio was an honor student with a good head on her shoulders and consistently excellent grades, making her a favorite among the teachers. Although she appeared somewhat reserved, she had a positive outlook on life and a courageous spirit. Michio and Yako formed a long-lasting friendship during childhood, with Yako's unbending, uncompromising attitude deeply influencing Michio. However, beneath her strong exterior, Michio had been pushing herself too hard and keeping her emotions bottled up to the point that they risked overflowing. Following her father's death three years ago and moving to a new house, Michio began avoiding Yako. Although the two remained in the same area of town and attended the same high school, they gradually grew further apart. Yako herself worried for her childhood friend, but, incapable of wading into the complexities of Michio's home life, kept her distance. The days passed, and though Michio longed to confess everything to Yako, the moment to do so never came. Michio carried an old talisman, a memento of her father, with her at all times. Yutaro. <laughs> Curse Echo, the foot washing mansion. Abandoned. Yutaro is an elite student at a prestigious university. He lives off the generous allowance he receives from his parents, who are both prominent local figures. Although Yutaro has lived a charmed material life, emotional neglect at home has caused him to develop a spoiled, egotistical streak. The only kindness he knew growing up was from his family's maid, and he still fondly thinks of the plain rice with butter they used to enjoy together. So he's one of those. The school should get rid of their crows and black cats, I am I vote more crows and black cats in scary Japanese schools. Bang bang. I'll, yeah, I'll vote for you. Everything should be horror or Halloween themed? I think so too. Let's see. Back here. You hear about suicides on the news, but for it to happen here, it's a little scary. By the way, isn't there a girl who transferred into Class C recently? Oh, I heard about her. She's gloomy. Doesn't stand out much. Did you know that the school she was at before she transferred also had a suicide? What? For real? That seems, like, kind of fishy. Egotistical and spoiled from being rich and a prestigious and a smart kid. Who could have thought? <gasps> Homeroom teacher. It's Junoichi was his name. <clears throat> there might be some of you who already know, but a member of our class, Michio Shiraishi, passed away last night. Okay, okay, calm down. I know this comes as a surprise, but please keep quiet. The cause of death is still under investigation. and There's nothing we know for certain at the moment. Detailed investigation reports will come from the police, so please don't go spreading any rumors. Got it? We're sending everyone home for today. No dilly-dallying on your way. School will be off tomorrow as well. Hey you, stop celebrating. Show some respect. There will be a memorial service scheduled next week at the school assembly. If anyone wishes to pay their respects individually... Because yeah, it's trailing off. Several days later. Uh, um, Yako? Eh? Uh, sorry to bug you. It's just, you seem a little different from your usual self. I hope I'm not being a nosy. Uh. Oh, I don't, I don't know, I don't know how Japanese works. <laughs> I don't know how Japanese works. Because we don't know her. So we are supposed to say Kurosuzu, right? I think is how it works. My only skills are shenanigans and dilly dally. She's sweet on you? She is being sweet to me, but I don't know her. You can't just go calling people by their first name in Japan, I think. Kurosuzu. Uh, yeah, I'm fine, thanks. Uh, you're Kurosuzu, right? The transfer student? Yes, but, um... You usually call me Mio. Oh, we already know each other. Okay. 
I do? Right, sorry. <laughs> I don't I don't know nothing. Look at her little face. She's Mio's so cute. All the kids are very cute. I feel bad that they have to do all this. There's just so much happening, I think I'm having trouble thinking straight. Yeah, this is perfect timing. There's actually something I want to ask you. Yeah? Oh god. Oh Christ. These are all these are all very serious. But I think this is what happens. Um, you know that spirit board thing that everyone's been doing? Where you summon a spirit and ask it whatever you want. Uh, yeah, I know it. She super knows it. I want to try it out. There is something I want to know. Why are you telling me this? I mean, you seem like the type to know about this stuff. Oh, I do? <laughs> My fucking cover's blown. Yeah, you look like you're really into that occult stuff. You know, you've got that kind of gloomy look. Uh, I don't know how I should feel about that. But you do know how to do it, right? You seem like the black cat and crow crowd. <laughs> Is she... You know... Ah! Did that sound like a crow? Well, yes. I think I probably know a little more than most. Okay, please help me. You're my only hope. Uh... I'll, just, I'll just ask in order, I guess. I never know what it wants of me in these kind of like cutscene more more cutscene style dialogue trees. Hey Mio? You know about the Rite of Resurrection, right? Um, yeah, it's that thing Mr. Adeishi apparently discovered and wrote an article about. I doubt there's many people who don't know, he's always talking about it. See, everybody does this little... Mm. Do you believe it's real? Huh? Well, um... <laughs> uh, it sounds a little too good to be true to me. Helpy Obi-Wan Kronobi. <laughs> but on the off chance that it really works... We could bring Michio back to life with it. I want to find it if there's even the slightest chance of bringing Michio back. But how will you look for it? Right, that's the thing. I love when characters make the... Yeah, it's really cute. I like that it's like a... It's a, it's a trait of this game that pretty much everybody has a version of it. At least so far. There, there may be a couple we haven't seen yet, but I think everybody has one. That's what I'm gonna bet. It, it, it feels like a trait of the art style, which is really cute. How about Michio? Michio, she... I wonder why she had to die. She didn't leave a note or anything, but they announced that it was a suicide. That can't be right. She would never kill herself. Michio was so happy and always looked on the bright side of things. She loved coming to school. I know she was going through some hard times, but for her to kill herself? I never got a chance to speak with her. She was often absent from school, and when she did come in, she looked depressed. Uh, you're right. And that's why everyone was so willing to accept that she committed suicide. They acted like they cared, but all they did was gossip about it. They put together little pieces of information and spread rumors like it's the truth. Isn't that terrible? Yeah, it is. I've heard some that are really awful. In the end, the only reason they're able to say stuff like that is because they aren't personally involved. It's true that she didn't get along with her new stepdad and that her grades went down. But to say things like, How sad! No wonder she killed herself! How dare they! She always told me she was okay whenever I talked with her because I was worried. She would have told me if there was something bothering her so badly she'd kill herself over it. Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't know if she believed that. I don't know if Mio believed that. I won't let Michio's death be written off like this. Like, maybe she got caught up in something bad. Something bad. People have been talking about that body found in former Yusuda Gardens, right? Some are saying that this town is cursed or something. Yeah, there has been a strange feeling around things recently. Um, the thing you want to ask, is it... Yeah. I want to know about the truth behind Michio's death, and where the Rite of Resurrection is hidden. I see. Hmm. I don't know if getting the answer to those questions will be as easy as you hope. Please, the teachers and police aren't any help, and there's only so much I can do alone. If there's even the slightest chance, then... Well... Okay. If that would make you feel better, then I'll help. Aw, oh, cute! Yes, thank you, Mio. Okay, then tomorrow, after dark... 
Another thing I wish about this game, I wish the files updated, persons of interest updated, was a little bit more subtle. Like, I wish I didn't have to close the thing. I wish it would just kind of pop up in the corner or something like that, you know? That's my wish. I love when girls support girls. <laughs> huh? Uh, are you awake, Yako? Yeah. What happened? You can't remember? Let's see. We use the spirit board. And... I suddenly heard something. Like, this weird voice. And then I passed out? Yes. As far as I can tell, you aren't experiencing any negative effects. I think it was just a mild shock from how sudden it was. Hmm. Ah, was everything okay with the spirit? Yep. It was almost bad, but I got it to leave. More importantly, what is that thing you have in your hand? Huh? In my hand? Whoa, what the heck is this? It looks so freaky. When did I get this? Ooh, I like this little song. Wait! This one- th Wait, have we heard this song before? It has the full- I don't know what instrument this is. It's a, it sounds like a theremin, but I don't think it is. I think it's just a synth. With the- I swear we haven't heard this before. This bangs! <laughs> Oh, and it has the singing because this is the music one. Ooh, this is good. I'm about to just leave this on. I think this is a new one. I think so. Is this the main menu one? No, no, no. The main menu one is like... Um, you know that one song in Puella Magi Madoka Magica? The one's like... Ee -hee -hee! And it's like the chorus of just people singing. The main menu sounds more like that. It's very intense. I think... Probably every curse stone has had its own song, and I probably just haven't noticed before, is what I'm guessing. Um, that seems like it would make sense. What equally makes sense is that, um, thus far this is the only curse stone that directly has to do with music. So it might be that it has it, its own special song. Both of those things make sense to me. If the Adams Family was a JRPG with a fight sequence, that's this song. <laughs> Exactly. It's great. It's great. See, that's fun. So yeah. Uh, I'm not always very attentive when it comes to like background music, so I might have missed something. But um, we definitely should remember this, because there is a chance, there is a chance that Yako may attempt... <laughs> to use this song against someone that we're playing as. And we need to be able to recognize that we're hearing it very quickly. Because if we hear it for 30 seconds, we'll die. So, keep that in mind. Keep this song in mind, everybody. Oh, there's so much anger and hatred held within it. it. Looks a little like tools that were used for ancient curses. What? That's so scary. Yako, you just said you heard a strange voice, right? It's so cute, because... <laughs> Mio has such like a round baby face and her cute little bangle. So when she puts on this serious face, it's very adorable. Could you tell me what you heard? Anything you can recall. I think it might be connected to that object. Uh, let's see. It felt like I was at the bottom of a dark place. Then this voice felt like it was echoing in my mind. After that, it just kept shouting, KILL THEM! I see. Thank you. Yako? I think you may have exactly what you need in order to use the Rite of Resurrection. A curse with the power to take people's lives and turn them into soul dregs. What? You mean this is a real curse? I know I said I wanted to use the Rite of Resurrection to bring back Michio, but... But why? Why me? It makes no sense. Yako. Please calm down and listen. Yeah. <laughs> I can't stay calm. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry about panicking. No, it's okay. Fear is something we feel in the face of the unknown. Sounds like fear got the best of you. Long ago, people would give names to phenomena they couldn't understand in order to live with them. Hmm? However, modern-day developments in science and culture have pushed for the rejection of things that can't be measured. And so, the paranormal has been treated like it doesn't exist. But they've been around since a long, long time ago. 
If you just understand, you can see that there's nothing to be afraid of. First, calming down is the most important. Accept reality for what it is. Huh. I only really gave this stuff a shot because it was popular, but... You really do have a connection with this stuff, don't you? Well, I suppose, to an extent. Hey, Mio? What do I do? Where do I start? Am I cursed? Am I gonna die? It's okay. I'll take care of the curse. That's why I'm here in the first place. Mm -hmm. What? <laughs> New profile pic is gonna be just this. Trust me. I'll take care of things. It'll be alright. Thanks. I was the one who dragged you along to do the spirit board. It's fine. You're desperate to find a way to try and help your friend. But spirit boards are dangerous. You have to take them seriously. So I'm glad you invited me. Alright, let's review everything we've learned so far and think of how to move forward. Okay. How about the curse? What is this curse? Am I cursed? Well... I've only looked into it a little. But I wouldn't quite say you're cursed. It's more like you've gained the ability to use the power of a curse. So there shouldn't be any kind of negative paranormal effect on you. The power to use a curse? Do you mean this curse stone? Yes. If the curse stone is used under certain conditions, a curse will be placed on someone, taking their life and turning it into soul dregs. Soul dregs are said to be required to enact the rite of resurrection. Normally, a curse is a spell that would only be usable by Onmyoji of considerable talent. I believe that curse stone makes it so- oh. I believe that curse stone makes it so that even normal people can use them. Hmm. So, someone like me with no knowledge could curse someone? Yes, but it's still nothing to take lightly. You could end up having it redirected right at you. To tell you the truth, something unusual did happen while we were using the spirit board. It happened right around midnight, I think. <gasps> this whole area seems to be under the effect of the Feast of Shadows. The Feast of Shadows? Yes, it's a type of spell that temporarily boosts the potency of the supernatural. It also has the effect of making the powers of certain curse echoes manifest more easily. Judging by its strength, I'd say it probably covers about a 3 to 4 kilometer radius. 3 to 4 kilometers? That's big enough to call all of Sumida City. Yes, I think the Feast of Shadows was used to cause the resentment lingering in the area to manifest as curse stones. Someone did this. The plot chickens. But who? I don't know enough to say. But it's likely that it was done by someone who wants to uncover the Rite of Resurrection. This isn't something to happen naturally. I see. A Cursed Stone's powers can only be used in this area under the influence of the Feast of Shadows. Excuse me. The effects also only appear after the sun is set. By setting a limit on when they can be used, the curses are strengthened. So, the curses can't be used outside this area, or during the day? Correct. But speaking of limits, to actually use a curse to kill someone, it seems there are conditions that need to be met. Conditions? You mean like how my curse echo needs someone to listen to the sound it makes for 30 seconds? To be honest, I don't really understand it. Like, how do I even summon the curse echo or make the sound? Do I just like, will it? Do you mind if I try? Stop it, stop, stop! You shouldn't be using curses so willy-nilly! Even if there are conditions that have to be met, the power to kill someone without leaving behind evidence is dangerous enough. In that sense, maybe you really have been cursed. I'm sorry that you got wrapped up in this situation, even though I'm here with you. That curse stone. I think whoever holds it becomes a curse bearer. It would probably be best for me to hold on to it, but... Then I'd feel bad about forcing it on you. No, I sense a powerful force rejecting me. I don't think I'd be able to take it. Really? Why? If we tried separating it from you, the curse may trigger. That's how bad I sense it wants to stay with you. No way. That curse stone might look like nothing more than an old Netsuke carving, but I can sense a powerful, resentful energy from it. I don't think it's a good idea for me to even touch it. I may seem like I know what I'm doing, but I don't know how to handle something this powerful. Really? This little thing? If you threw it away and someone with bad ideas picked it up, it could be bad. 
I think it would be safer to avoid the risk of getting anyone else involved and have you hold on to it for now. Well, now I'm kind of freaked out. Anyways, we need to make it to daybreak. I think the curse should weaken once it's morning. I'll help you find a way to deal with it then. Okay. So there are two things you should remember. First, do not fulfill the conditions while it's night. Second, should you happen to fulfill the conditions, don't use the curse. Right. About the seven mysteries. The mysterious voice said the curse stone is called the Fool's Procession, right? Yeah, uh, that's from the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo, right? Our school is said to be connected with a story with the same name, one of the mysteries. Right. I don't think it's a coincidence. This is just a guess, but... It's possible that you were chosen because it could feel your desire for the Rite of Resurrection. Ooh. If this is a curse of the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo, then it's possible that there are others who receive curses associated with the other mysteries. Yeah, that voice also said that there are other uh, curse bearers, or whatever you called them. Not only that, apparently you can get a lot of soul drugs by killing a curse bearer. Right, that's certainly not good. Even if we have no intention of killing others with the curse, there's a chance you may be targeted if other curse bearers find us. Yeah. We'll have to avoid anyone who has another of the curses. That means we should avoid people at night as much as possible. Oh. But Mio, yes? If this curse is real, that means I could bring back Michio if I used it, right? The Rite of Resurrection would be real too. Uh, yes, that's true. But you can't do that, Yako. But... It feels like it's not the time to worry about that kind of stuff. If Michio died in an accident, then I'm sure she didn't want to die. What's the issue with putting a little curse on a complete stranger? I sort of feel like it wouldn't be a big deal. What's going on with you? You're not acting like yourself, Yako. You would never even consider taking the life of another person. Is it the curse's influence on you? Maybe the curse echo's grudge is rubbing off on you? Will you show me it for a second? Uh, hmm? Is there something inside it? No, stop! Yako? Oh, I'm sorry. But it's like... I just suddenly really didn't want you to touch it. I understand. I'm sorry. But you need to give up on the right of resurrection. What? Because that's the real curse. Using resurrection as a lure, it tempts curse bearers into using their curses. You have to resist it. Don't let yourself be deceived by some curse. But Michio could... I think for tonight we should get you home to rest. I'll walk you. The curse's influence should subside in the morning. Okay. I'm sorry, but I'm telling you that you need to give up on the right. It's beyond us. Even a single curse stone alone is too much to handle. Bringing back the dead isn't something so simple. I know how much it hurts, but please focus on just worrying about surviving tonight. Even now, we're in great danger. Okay, let's get going then, shall we? We'll take the same route we took to get here. Right. We'll be fine, right? There's no one else at the school, is there? I think so. The night shift janitor shouldn't be patrolling this late at night either. <laughs> huh? What? Why'd the lights go out? Oh fuck, I thought the lights already were out. It's really dark in here. Mio? Are you okay? Oh, I have to look around. Hello? Mio? She's not here? What's happening? Where, where are you? It's the villain. I think it may be the darkness, Mia. Or something. Oh shit, I've gotten lost. It's too dark. Oh yeah! Huh? Oh no, no, no! What was that? Get me out of here! Mio? Mio! Mio, where are you? Yako, I'm here! O over here, can you see me? 
Huh? Where? I can't see anything. Oh, am I still? Hang on. Not that way, Yako. Behind you. I'm behind you. Turn around this way. It's pitch black. I have no idea which way I'm facing. Well, why is it the other way? I don't know where anyway is. Hi, Mio. There you are, Mio. This way, over here. Be careful. Your field of vision is being limited. Right. Ooh. Mystery, mystery. That jump scare we I was eating still. Sorry, air bros. But we knew that Yarby jump scares. 90s anime cliffhanger. We're going back to Hotaway. I want to know so bad what's going on, but I know it's more exciting Or at least I think it's more exciting. Let's go to Hotaway Where now everyone is at the same point. The shit is hitting the fan I love this. Yeah, now I'm in that op that opening tough 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 Decisions were made and I don't think a lot of them were correct. But now I'm really in. By the way, I'll probably- I probably won't play for too, too much longer. I think we'll probably get through this Hotaway section and then maybe one more, but I'm not sure. It's been almost an hour since Richter left. He promised he'd call me if anything happened. But he hasn't. Oh, I haven't been looking for stickers! So all I can do is wait. And wait. I haven't been looking for stickers anywhere else, and I told myself I would, but then I forgot. There's nothing on at this hour. I see no point in turning it on. Or oh, you can't even look at the sticker anymore. Should I put a record on? No, it's too late for that. I'm not in the mood for music anyway. The flowers put me at ease. Just a little. That old hanging scroll. I've seen it too often to feel anything from it now. Ooh, newspaper. It's, uh... Just gonna make sure. I'm waiting for Richter to contact me, but he hasn't. They don't have cell phones yet in this time, right? The ticking seems so loud. It just goes to show how quiet it is. What's this? A newspaper? It must have fallen off the chair. <laughs> It's a newspaper. I only leave them in here for the guests. I hardly ever read them myself. I don't think I've taken the time to go over one in years, in fact. Well, it's not like I have anything better to do. Is there gonna be a curse in here? Society. It looks like the city's biggest problem right now is pollution. I remember how the air and water used to be even more polluted. The river was covered in scum from all the sewage and industrial waste and it stank so badly it'd make my eyes water. Eventually people started getting sick and it couldn't be ignored anymore. Unfortunately, it's gotten better since then. Although the air around the industrial district is still filthy with gas and smog. Wait, I want to keep reading. Economy. All sorts of articles about the current state of the economy. Now that the post-war boom has passed its peak, we're moving into the area of lar era of large corporations. It's about 220 to 230 yen to the dollar. Manufacturing is on the rise and exports are healthy. The dollar is down from its height and people are saying it could fall further. There's no denying how much the standard of living has improved in the past few years. It's common to own a car and television now, and supermarkets are better stocked than ever. I wanna know. Everything. Now that everyone has more spending money to go around, people are coming up with all kinds of new diversions. It seems like only yesterday that people were flocking to the arcades to shoot aliens. But now we have these enormous theme parks and gaming machines that plug straight into our televisions. Curious. Everyone's talking about superhero series, foreign films, and movies based on the latest bestseller. Back in my day, fusion rock and folk music was all the rage. But now it's all about city pop and idols. I was wondering, I was like, if we're in the culture section, they're definitely going to mention idols at some point. Hee hee hee, silly. I find it hard to care about that sort of thing anymore. Everyone attends high school now, even girls. Universal education policy, they call it. The country's gotten rich enough that every child can go to school. Education is the backbone of modern society. If you want to work for a good company, you have to get into a good university. With more people in the running than ever, the competition to get into those universities has gotten fierce, though. The new generation is rebelling. Schoolyard violence and delinquency are on the rise. But my boy was too sensible to get mixed up in any of that. 
I don't want to read anymore. It'll only remind me of him. Wait, real quick. Oh, I can just keep reading them. Oh, I thought it was one prayer. Which I should have known better because that's not how this section works, but guess what we're doing for the next 10 minutes? I don't really watch much television. It feels as if all the information in the world gets passed through that little black box. But Father stopped them from reporting on the kidnapping back when it happened. I was glad about that. Less fuss. Now the comedy boom is over, all the comedians are flocking to other genres. The occult seems really popular at the moment. Look at all these paranormal specials. Back to culture. I hear the new big thing is some mascot line of delinquent birds. Mocking birds, I think it's called. <laughs> you heard about this an hour ago. Was that what Richter was talking about? Trends seem to have such short shelf lives now, with how quickly the times are changing. I thought I saw a bug on the floor. I think I'm just too old to keep up anymore. It's young people who are leading the way with their modern worldviews. My generation will only fall further behind. Maybe you can look at the sticker again now. Oh no, I don't need to. I was just wondering. Because I've already like collected it. And so I think you can only collect the stickers at a certain time. At least that's what the list of the stickers implies. So I was just hovering over just to make sure. Although with everyone flocking to the city, land prices are skyrocketing. Nowadays, most people can only dream of home ownership. The city center is going to be nothing but apartments before long. Hmm. I'm not exactly a businesswoman, so this all feels like another world to me. If there's one thing Hanjo never wants for, it's horrific crimes. They found a police officer dead in a local park just the other day. A lot of my family are in the police. I hope it wasn't anybody I knew. I don't read the news anymore. Not since last year. It brings back bad memories. So I think we're done done. Oh no, society still. Suicide at local high school. Oh, I remember that. A high school girl jumped off a roof about a week ago. She was bullied, I think. Or maybe it was something about exam pressure? Eh? What? But... No, this can't be right. Her name. Michio Shiraishi from Komagata High School? It can't be. What do you mean, Haruei? What do you mean? Eh? Michio Shiraishi, the same girl who witnessed my son's kidnapping, committed suicide last week. There she goes. But that means... Mr. Jonouchi was terrified of someone who already died? Is that what he meant by a curse? I can't work this out on my own. Maybe Richter will know. Why would he call? Oh, I haven't left it off the hook, have I? Have you? I'm waiting for Richter to contact me, but he hasn't. I've made sure the receiver is on the hook. It'll ring as soon as he calls. <laughs> that must be him. Or is it? I hope it's not a ghost. Hello, Shigima residence. Uh-oh. How do I, Shigima? 2 a.m. Thank you for the hydrate. Everybody drink louder. Koma got a bridge. Richard called me out to meet him, and we came here to Komagata Bridge. This is a different bridge, right? Richter, there's something I need to tell you. Funny. I was just thinking the same thing. Nah. Oh, come on, bundles. Oh, that's right, Isaiah. You haven't seen Richter yet, right? He's a handsome man. Right. This is what Mio told Yako about, the Feast of Shadows. A technique that allows one to create a field that temporarily boosts spiritual energy. In addition to amplifying the spiritual power of a particular area, it can also be used to amplify the strength of grudges and desires tied to the area. The effectiveness of the Feast of Shadows is dependent on the abilities of the user, but it's possible to limit the scope and range of the spell to such a degree that one could use it to amplify the power of even those not naturally gifted with spirit sense. Right, notes on Michio. Case notes regarding the suicide of Michio Shiraishi, Komagata High School Class 2C. Body discovered one week ago. Died from full body blunt force trauma in an alley off South Wadigesui Street. Believed to have fallen from the roof of a nearby apartment complex. Potential motives. The deceased parents had recently remarried and rumors among the students suggest physical abuse by her stepfather. May constitute motive for suicide. But hang on, because if I'm remembering correctly, there should be a sticker. I think that's what it said. There it is! <laughs> We're on Komagata Bridge over the Sumida River. 
There's a highway on one side and a freeway on the other, but they're both deserted this late at night. <laughs> there it is. We found one! Wow. <laughs> this one's good. This is good. I like it. Oh, I should have gone straight to the page, like I said, but let me think. Standing around is the last thing I want to be doing right now. This is my only chance to bring back my son. I can't afford to fritter it away. To fritter it away? I've never heard that. I've only heard of an apple fritter. I've never heard of frittering something. <laughs> the Sumida River. The water is filthy and horrid, but at night when it's still, it looks almost peaceful. Can I ask you something, ma'am? <laughs> is the Sumida River what you Hanjo folks picture when you think of home? I couldn't say. All I can tell you is that I can hardly stand the sight of it. Right. Should have guessed. This was when they fo where they found him after he went missing. All alone, floating in that horrible water. All I can think is how scared he must have been. How cold he must have been. What did he ever do to deserve something so awful? I've come here every day since then. And I prayed to the river to give him back. To give me back my son. Day after day after day. You know, in olden times, people believed rivers mark where our world met the next. Eh? So the act of crossing flowing water had a huge amount of spiritual significance. Back when Edo was founded, the people of Chuo saw the Sumida River the same way. They associated the far side of the river with the afterlife. That same place would later become Hanjo. All their fear and revulsion accumulated there and took root. But then the Ryogoku Bridge sprang up after the Great Fire of Meideki, and just like that, Hanjo was part of the city too. And as it turned from farmland into a town, the people surrounded it with man-made rivers and crisscrossed it with canals and waterways. Weren't those to prevent flooding? That's what I was told. They were, but that's not all they were for. Their other purpose was to contain all the corruption that had built up on the far shore, and stop it leaking through to our side of the Great Divide. Officially, they were a physical barrier, but unofficially, they were a spiritual one, too. So, if I have this right, are you saying that Hanjo is a place where the real world meets the afterlife? Exactly. That's why the Rite of Resurrection is here rather than anywhere else. I'm sure of it. And it's probably why the Seven Mysteries and their curses have survived to the modern day. And I guess that would make this spot we're standing now right over the water, the border between life and death. If there ever was a place where bringing back the dead might be possible, I reckon it's here. It's funny that you mentioned praying to the river. That might have done more than you think. Is that supposed to make me feel better? Just thinking aloud, ma'am. Hmm. Well, it's a nice thought. Not to undermine the moment, but there's a Mareep in chat, which is a really, really cute sheep Pokemon. So, <laughs> I'd recommend trying to catch it if you like cute Pokemon. You know, not to, uh, not to undermine the moment. Oh, that's right. There's one more memory I have of this river. Do you mind if I tell you? Go ahead. It must have been about 20 years ago now, when I was still a schoolgirl. Back then, the Sumida River was much filthier than it is now. It was full of garbage and industrial discharge. It was scummy and slimy and it stank. You could look out over the water and see dead cats and dogs and pigeons just floating. And one day, among all the filth and garbage, there was a piece of my missing classmate's hand. <gasps> It's all connected! What? It was almost a miracle when you stopped to think about it. What were the chances that someone would find a part of her that was still recognizable? And that, although everything but the palm had rotted away in the water, the part that was left would have an identifiable scar. <gasps> and that they could tell it had been a murder from the blade marks on the bone. <laughs> Wait. Are you talking about the Najima murders? So you have heard of it. I'm impressed. I assume you were but an elementary schooler at the time? I wasn't really aware of it then. I only heard about it after the fact. 
I had no idea the victim was a classmate of yours. To be honest, it was all a bit of a blur. A wave of chaos just parting around me. Something like that. They said the rest of her body must have sunk to the bottom of the river. They combed the riverbed, but they only ever found pieces. Everything else must have rotted and flowed out to sea. Afterwards, I heard that all the divers who had been looking for her fell ill. A sorry story for everyone involved, huh? It's funny. Everyone figures the river's filthy already, so one more piece of garbage won't hurt. But every little bit makes it worse. It's a vicious cycle. I know I wouldn't want to go rooting around down there myself. That's right. Which is why the riverbed is the last place anybody would go looking. Or so was the killer's thinking, I suppose. The times were changing quickly back then. Things were confusing, everyone seemed to be in a hurry. Young people were moving to Tokyo in droves. Some even ran away from home to make it in the big city. And they made easy targets for bad people. A lot of them ended up disappearing without a trace. Hmm? You see, back then, if you chopped a body up into tiny pieces and threw it in the river, it would rot, quickly and discreetly, and sink to the bottom, never to be seen again. Are you saying what I think you're saying? They arrested him shortly after. Fumichika Najima, the man who killed my classmate and cut her into pieces. He was so methodical about it, it couldn't have been his first crime. And people began to wonder how many other girls he'd murdered the same way. The police never found any evidence of other murders, in the end. But the river knows the truth. How many corpses has it swallowed up over the years, I wonder? That same thought spread through everyone's mind, and they started to avoid this area. So really, this river has been rank with corruption for decades now. Or at least, that's how it seems to me. Well, was that interesting? Well, I can see why you don't have any good memories of this river. With all that darkness lurking beneath the surface, there's no reason that you would. Still, if I may, ma'am, I'm surprised you know so much about the Najima murders. But how could I not? After all, I was the one who found the hand. I like how it did the little sting as if she didn't say that already. <laughs> <laughs> the police actually wrote me a thank you letter. They said it was only thanks to me that they managed to bring Najima to justice. That was the only time my father ever said he was proud of me. Huh. I guess it just wasn't the killer's day. Sometimes I wonder if he resents me for it. Ooh, la drama. Is it possible that Shuichi Sugima was killed because she was the snitch all these years later? Alrighty, folks, this lady can really tell a story. Let's give her a hand. <laughs> Percy, terrible. But I think, I, like, I'm actually going to check the, ch let me check the log, because I swear she said, oh, I saw my, my classmate's hand floating here. And then it's like, dun, dun, dun. I saw the hand. And it's like, yeah, of course. Yeah, you said that, ma'am. <laughs> Not to drag her too much. I just think it's funny. It's a good dramatic moment. I think saying that this is where I saw my classmate's hand. She said this is where I saw it, right? Not this is where it was found. I could be wrong, but I swear she said this is where I saw it and then later said that they like fished it out or whatever. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but that's okay. The Sumida River. I have nothing but awful memories of it. Yeah. Yeah, you sure do. I think I've seen everything. I got the flamingo. Ah, that means I'm gonna have to go back and get the other ones. But if you're right, right. If I'm wrong, that's okay, and I'll be corrected. But if I'm right, I'm right. So, like, I love my odds. <laughs> I've been sitting on that one. I made myself a bowl of homemade udon and miso ooh, from that nice lady who owns the market and I've been very distracted. No, don't even worry about it, Percy. I'm so happy for you. Genuinely. Oh. It's 50-50. Right, exactly. 50-50 is not bad. He's gazing down at the water. Oh, that's all it says about Richter. All right. Oh, wait. Let's... Oh, wait. I already did this right. Yeah, yeah. Same thing. Wait, what do I have to say again? Oh no, I need to- I need to- Hey, the thing about Mi Michio? We gotta know. 
even if she didn't say she originally found it, she described it like she did. Yeah, I think that's fair. I actually love her despite being related to cops. Sometimes when a character is written that fucking well, you just can't care. You can't care. I'll go first. She's an assertive woman. I'll go first. There's something I need to tell you. What's up? Well, that girl, Michio Shiraishi, the one who was with Shuichi on the day of the kidnapping, that's her. Well, she's dead. She's what? The student who committed suicide last week. That was her. I heard something like that happened. Never got the name, though. Talk about bad luck. We finally get a lead, only to find it's turned into a literal dead end. Unless her death was the whole recent Jonouchi. Recent. <laughs> so Hispanic. Unless her death was the whole reason Jonouchi was so shaken up. He said she was going to curse him. Was he talking about her taking revenge from beyond the grave? Seems like we're back where we started. Not necessarily. That teacher knows something. I'm sure of it. At the very least, I'd put money on him having something to do with Miss Shiraishi's death. That's why he's so scared of being cursed by her. I see. And also, something tells me he knows more about your son's kidnapping. <laughs> In any case, I think I've got a good idea of what he's hiding. Call it a hunch. A hunch? Well, more of a theory. Care to take a guess? She's smart, I can guess. He's asking to take a guess, we'll play. I can't say for certain, but... Michiro Shiraishi. Mr. Jonouchi. Oh wait, shit. I didn't think that we were constructing a sentence. Mr. Jonouchi... I was I wasn't ready for this. Wait, will X go back? Okay. I don't even know what the whole sentence is gonna be, but let's start. Michio Shiraishi silence Mr. Jonouchi, which is true. That is with blackmail. But with the curse is just the thing that they said. Right? <laughs> this is such a weird <laughs> Michio silence Jonouchi with murder, with a curse, or with blackmail. Hang on, let me... The thing is... Yeah, thank God for the backspace. Now the student wants to silence him with a curse, but she's already dead, is the thing. But the, the thing that's confusing is that, like, Richter believes in curses now? But I have to imagine that, like, he, his his thing that he believes Jonouchi knows is not going to be a curse. Like, that doesn't make sense to me. So it's got to be something about blackmail. It doesn't really make sense to say Jonouchi silence Michio. So this is kind of weird. Because... If that were the case... I'm going to say blackmail. Blackmail. Because he's a freak somehow. What if... Oh, this is Richter saying it. What if Michio Shiraishi silenced Mr. Jonouchi with blackmail? What do you think? Interesting. That's what he claimed was going on. But I wonder about that. Wait, what? Wait, I thought blackmail was like... When you have the dirt on somebody. Not... Huh? I don't know if that sentence was prepared for me to say that. Do you know what I'm saying? What he claimed was that it was a curse. I don't think he said anything about blackmail. Blackmailing is like, I know that you're a fucking freak and I'm gonna tell everybody unless you do what I say. Michio is dead and her suicide is suspicious is true. But we... We, the player, believe that she was killed by a curse. So Jono Uchi seems to think that he's gonna get cursed too by her or something. I think he originally went to Richter saying she was blackmailing him. Where's Jono Uchi? Wait, is he not in here? 
Or can I just not a storyteller? Fumichika, Takumi, Yutaro, Michiomi, Sakazaki, Yoshimura. Huh? Is he not in here? Oh. Well. I promised to figure out- No, no, no! Um, he- We- We- I don't know if you were here, Zazie, but we viewed the conversation where Richter talks to Jono Uchi. That's not what he says. He says, I'm scared that this girl, this little girl, this high school, is going to kill me with a curse. Because she is a, like, curse person. He doesn't know what a curse bear is, I don't think. But... So, right. You're correct in the sense that Jono Uchi went to Richter and said, I believe that Michio is going to kill me with a curse if I tell you about this. So now that I've told you about this, I need you to protect me from Michio. So now this is Richter saying, I think Rick, I think um, Jono Uchi is hiding even more. Didn't Richter just say there was already blackmail? No, I don't think so. I'm pretty sure he just said, um, well, I guess it's blackmail in the sense that like, okay, what happens is... Jono Uchi sees Michio take Shuichi into a car. Shuichi being Haruei's uh, son. So Michio lures Shuichi away. Jono Uchi sees this. Was this after Mitchell died? Who the hell is Mitchell? Oh, is that a typo of Michio? Was this after uh, Michio died? Yes, Richter has only been working for Haruei for like a few days. That was after Michio was already dead. Meet you, I'm on my phone. Okay, <laughs> sorry, I figured that's what it was. I was real confused for a second. Yeah, I love Google, define blackmail. Right, it's extortion. Extortion of money or something else of value from a person by the threat of exposing a criminal act or discreditable information. I will tell everyone that you're a fucking weirdo and that you did this fucked up thing if you don't do what I say. Blackmail. Simple. Not the four kids dub. Yeah, that's that's Mitchell. <laughs> no, but yeah, so that's why I think this little bit of the game, like these past few lines, are just like maybe wrong or something. John Ochi did not say he was being black. Maybe mistranslated. It might be mistranslated. It may be mis um misconstructed in some way. Um, it may be a false flag where it thought that I said something else or it didn't expect me to say this, so it went, you know, like, it says, if you say this, go here, if you say this, go here, if you say this, go here, and it just went to the wrong one. There's a low tad in chat. I fucking love low tad. It has a big lily pad on its head that people can stand on. I'm gonna try a netball. I think low tad's pretty cute. Your mileage may vary because they're very silly looking. Excuse me. But yeah. So what I think is happening is that the game considers this blackmail, so saying she was blackmailing him as being redundant and probably wrong? I mean, r the thing is, it was a million percent a curse. I guess that it was blackmail as Hadaway. The issue is that Richter is saying that's what he claimed was going on. That's not what the fuck blackmail is, even a little bit. That's a threat. <laughs> you are threatening to kill somebody. Completely different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're good, Zazie. It's, it's confusing because the game is slightly confused, and I'm just trying to make sure we are on track for exactly what the game is confused about. We, we've said what really happened. Um, Jonouchi is a witness to... Um, have we considered that Richter isn't great at his job? Everybody says he's great at his job so far, so I have no choice but to believe them. Let me Google if you can blackmail to murder. <laughs> no, that's not, that's not, that's just a threat. I think you could consider it extortion. Congrats to me, Ambrose, Azalea, and Saturn on the low tab. Rip anybody else who tried, I'm terribly sorry. But that might have been everybody, I can't tell. Regardless, um, regardless of if you can technically use murder and blackmail like that, that is not what blackmail means. It's one of those things where you would have to get down to the dictionary definition from like 20 years ago of what blackmail means that nobody uses. Like, it is not correct. The game, you know, you can sometimes, sometimes you can tell when it's a B project from Square Enix is what I'm gonna say. It's not perfect. 
Because it's a Square Enix B project. It's a- I'm having a lot of fun so far. But... This wouldn't happen in Final Fantasy VII Remake. That's all I'm saying. You know? <laughs> At the end of the day, the game said you weren't saying anything new. Right. The game gave me the option to, like, make different choices to say, oh, it's this or that or the other. And then only gave a reaction to one thing. So when I said a different thing, it didn't know what the fuck to do. At all. Word choices remain choices. <laughs> exactly. Ads are coming up, so I'm going to continue blabbering for a moment, if you'll allow me, and I should probably drink some water. Ugh. Wild. I mean, hey, while we're, um, while ads are going through, if anyone has a question about something that is happening in the story so far, now's the time to ask it. While, while we're getting real into the timeline here, now's the time to ask it. What happened in the tutorial? So, partially said, and we're kind of joking, this is like... Effectively, there was an act one that was way too fucking long. The tutorial involves two characters who, who have not come up again at all. Shogo, who is like a 25-year-old business guy, office employee, and Yoko, who's an occult-interested young woman. And um, they're friends, flirting a little, but they're friends. The reason that Yoko is such an occult person, she's really interested, so she says, in bringing her dog Okopoko back to life. So she believes that Shogo has like a spirit sense and so kind of recruits him to help her with all of this stuff. In the tutorial, pardon me, Yoko dies. She gets cursed and she dies somehow and Shogo ends up with the curse that killed her, but we don't know how it happens. Shogo's curse is the curse of the Whispering Canal which means that he can kill anyone who walks away from him. Anyone who, quote-unquote, abandons him. He can just murder. <laughs> <No. laughs> I need to listen to the recap. If you're not right now. <laughs> you can make her say fuck a thing. <laughs> Thank you for the resub. Isaiah, I was so sorry to, ma to make you do this. But... Enjoy your new sub badge. Enjoy our sub baby. If you like to name it, let me know. Enjoy your emotes and enjoy hopefully no ads. But okay, if we're going to do a full recap. So this is a dumb question, but didn't he tell her to stay behind in the first thing you did today? Yes, Saturn. So what's weird and the reason why we're saying the tutorial was too long and, and pissed us off. We get the curse and we meet pretty much all the other major players in the game. We meet Harue, we meet Richter, we meet Tsutsumi, we meet Edio, we meet Yako, although we don't get her name, but we meet Yako, and we meet Yutaro. We kill everybody except for um, Richter and the cops. We don't kill them. And throughout all of that, there's a couple times where we are forced to kind of interact with the meta-narrative situation of the game, which is a character called the Storyteller. Like, this is why whenever I go to settings, it becomes like a TV, is because we, the player, as we are in the game, are like controlling a TV and the storyteller is like our guide, right? So then the storyteller, at the very end of it, Shogo manages to get 100% on his curse stone from killing Hadoe and um, Yako and someone who we don't actually know, another curse bearer who he kills without seeing them and blah, blah, blah. And then the game like breaks. It's like, pff, it breaks. Don't know what's going on anymore. We return to the storyteller. And the storyteller says, hey, for reasons I can't tell you, you haven't had the ability to do this before now, but here's the story chart. Oh shit, fuck. I can't show you the story chart right now, but that's that thing that you've been seeing where it looks like, it's like a black screen with a bunch of little squares and a timeline. Yeah, you've seen the chart, just making sure. That is the story chart. Um, we use the story chart to go backwards in time and save Yoko. Because the thing about this whole meta narrative thing is that we're not directly controlling the characters. Sometimes we can choose what they might say or which order that they'll do things in, but ultimately we don't have control over them. So throughout that whole thing, Shogo was just kind of behaving as Shogo would if he didn't know anything. When we go back in time, we as like the influence on Shogo's brain are able to tell him how he can save Yoko. But as we see from the story chart, 
We save Yoko, he forces her to go home, Yoko appears to be safe and alive. But then there's a huge gap in time where, at least for the beginning, Shogo appears to be like investigating the park for whatever the curse is. Come morning, Shogo is dead, and we don't know why or how that happens. So now we are back at like a 1 a.m., 2 a.m. situation. Uh, the previous things that we did with Yako and Tsutsumi, those were from midnight to 1 a.m. So they're at 1 a.m. Now with Richter and Hadaway, we're at 2 a.m. Is everybody caught up? Should we do the rest of the story updates too? Because what the, the main interesting thing that's happening is we are now finding out that everybody is truly connected in one way or another, except for Yoko and Shogo who, at this exact moment in time, appear to just be like the tutorial characters in a weird way, but everyone else is connected. And a lot of them... Well, there's two main things that people are connected by. Michio Shiraishi, or the Nejima? I got his last name wrong, I'm pretty sure. No, so smart. Or the Nejima murders. But Shoujo ran into the other characters to kill them. Yes. But that's in the original timeline. So we don't know we don't know what is gonna happen yet. We don't know if Shogo is alive and has the curse stone at this point in time and we're gonna run into him. We don't know if he really is dead and somebody else got it. Because one thing we do need to remember is that in Shogo's timeline, there was like this shady figure who wanted to take the curse stone from him that he killed like a like a true like man in black situation who's like the right hand of the owner of the soap company that he works at and this person's like hey i want the curse stone my boss wants it because she's afraid that everyone's gonna kill everybody so we're gonna go and like contain them and he's like no fuck you and kills him in this situation at the point that um shogo forces yoko to get into the cab and leave in the original timeline Shogo already has the curse at that point. So now we have this weird man in black guy who's been watching him at the park for forever. And Shogo might not have the curse stone, so maybe something else happens. I paid attention, but I still gotta watch that first bit. <laughs> maybe, maybe. It's it's a lot of information. I think the game has been drip feeding it pretty pretty well like pretty impressively so far but there's just a lot to go over there's a lot i mean here let me even, let me just fucking illustrate persons of interest everyone multiple paragraphs well so sometimes more than multiple backwards files i'll i'll read these in a sec wait no because then they'll go away but yeah like the sumida river and there's like 30 of these Wait, I didn't even see you said person, sorry. This game, it's the story of six friends <laughs> living in New York in the 90s, just figuring out life via homophobic content slash the keyword type of Greek game. But I would catch up, I would shake. No, yeah, don't, no worries. I should, I should upload the VODs of this. Alright, Sumida River. A class A river that is part of the Arakawa River system, which runs through much of eastern Tokyo and empties into Tokyo Bay. During the Edo period, Sumida's riverbanks played a key role in the transportation of lumber used for construction. In addition to its logistical importance, it was also a place for the common folk to gather and enjoy activities such as seasonal flower viewing or river bathing, and there exist many woodblock prints depicting such activities. The area became plagued with sewage issues when the surrounding environs were industrialized in the post-war period, but the situation has improved since. Many unique bridges span the Sumida River, including the Ryogoku and Azumabashi bridges, which attract a large number of visitors as sightseeing spots. Massive fireworks displays in the summer are also always sure to draw a crowd. The river has served as a cornerstone for both the city and its people, having both aided in its development and serving as an inspiring backdrop for countless works of art and literature. I'm gonna stream for eight more hours, so twitch.tv, eight hours stream! <laughs> Wasn't the other guy like, this is the most cursed river ever, it fucking sucks! <laughs> Yeah, kind of. Richter did kind of say that they didn't like it very much. Thank you for the hydrate. It won't be... It, it definitely won't be eight more hours. But there have been times in the past where I lied and streamed several hours longer than I said. But I'm kind of hungry. But I'm not hungry. I'm not as hungry as I was fucking on Friday, that's for sure. But the pangs of hunger have begun to hit. And a wubby bubby would taste pretty good right now. 
I will keep drinking, thank you. That lemonade I had earlier really fucked up my voice. But at least it makes me sound more dramatic for the ghosts. Alright, Komagata Bridge. One of the bridges spanning the Sumida River. Completed in 1927 as part of the reconstruction effort following the Great Kanto Earthquake, it is notable both for its distinctive blue arches and the cutting edge, for the time, techniques used in its construction. There are many bridges stretching across the Sumida River, each boasting a unique structural form and design. Mockingbirds, we got that fucking flamingo! What's up, Jorkar? Hope the stream has been well. Thank you, it has been going well so far. Good to see you, good to see you. This is the thing that's always kind of fraught about um the pink punisher beep, 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 beep. this is the thing that's always kind of fraught about doing uh games mystery games especially mystery games that are long and complicated and this one is both things so far is if you miss one stream you're a little fucked you know <laughs> pardon me just a little bit and Right, we got updates on Najima. We don't need to be this way. Man. Well, folks, <laughs> thanks so much for hanging. Uh, that's somehow Hank Hill in an alternate dimension. That's Hank Hill in the dimension where King of the Hill is an American show instead of anime. Boo. Not the casual fat phobia. The thing is, like... It's a Square Enix game. You know, it's a it's a triple A published video game, and it is a triple A published Japanese video game. And there are certain phobias that are more common than others. If you're in a triple A American video game, the Islamophobia is coming in at some fucking point. So for a triple A triple A published triple A uh, technically produced Japanese game, the fact like I I thought it would come in at some point, but I thought it would be a quick thing. Not the character's entire fucking design. Yeah. Like, I thought someone would call someone else fat. Or, or like, someone would be like, oh, that, I don't even know, actually. I can't even think of a good example, but I thought it would be like a one-off. The evilest character in the entire game, fat evil. Yeah, fat evil. Man. That was a jump scare. That's the real jump scare that was in this game. Because not in a million years. Did I think that I think that this is what it was gonna be? My problem is his hair, which is somehow more phobic than anything else. Ah, oh, man, it's it's rough. It's tough out here, folks. For the record, in case anyone is just joining us, are there any other fat characters in the game? You might be asking. You don't need to ask that question. You know what the answer is. At least so far. Maybe there's somebody. Um, but yeah, that's a rough one, folks. Especially because... And I'm not gonna get fully into game theory yet. Because there's like too much... There's just too much to cover right now. But I have a feeling that this person, this character... And the Najima murders that he committed are playing a larger, a significantly larger role than just being, like, a background fucked up thing that happened that links a couple characters. I think that the Najima murders will be having an impact on the ghost and the curse situation and all that shit going on. So, I'm not very happy about this. Fumichika Najima is the man who made headlines over two decades ago as the perpetrator of the brutal killings known as the Najima murders. It says his occupation is self-employed, however, I believe he is in prison for the rest of his life. 
So I'm not totally sure why it says self-employed. But... Giving white glass and short hair and he's just me? They, no! I don't think so. Then Gmo murders probably are not related. You think so, Nikki? You got here three seconds ago and you said I'm pretty positive. He's a tattoo artist in the prison. That would be good. Art is cool. You can be employed in prison if you believe. Maybe Japanese prison's different. Do you think he might not have been the real murderer or he was possessed? Yeah, maybe. But if that's the case, you know there's going to be a point where they're going to be like, Well, because of his physical stature, he couldn't have committed the murders. Like, if it's a thing, it's going to be that. I'll bet you, I, I'll bet you one American dollar. Or like a Starburst or something. I'm also in prison for the rest of my life. Straight prison, aka the world, aka big heterosexuality. <sighs> Anyways, totally in line with anime horror tropes, yeah. The thing is, the game is so interesting and interconnected and dramatic and complex so far that I hope it doesn't become something so simple. My thoughts about what happened is, I think the game was hinting the dude was scared of the student, irrationally so, so he might have murdered her to silence her about something. But if he saw her after she died, then he has every reason to be scared of her. Yeah. Isn't half this game about unconscious bodies? <laughs> oh my god, Saturn, you're right! You're right! Fuck! I would hope that they don't say that, but they might. I just think that they will. Um, yeah, so we don't know if Jonochi saw her after she was dead or not, but we know that Jonochi and Richter's conversation was after she was already dead. I will double check that once we're done with this chapter, but I'm almost certain of that. So we don't know if he saw her or not after she was dead, but he thought that she was going to kill her. Yeah, or she was going to kill him. You know what I meant. All right, let me catch back up. Yeah, he knows something else. That's what well, that's what Richard's gonna get at. That's what we've been baiting for the last like hour while I was talking about nothing. <laughs> I wonder about that. Hmm, that might be a little bit far fetched. I see. I'm sorry if I disappointed you. I'm not really cut out to play detective. Well, no point dwelling on speculation. The truth will out in time. Right now, I think we need to have another chat with Mr. Jonouchi. Also, if I had guessed, you would have just told me, you bitch. Uh. Well, that's fine. Right, if he's not already dead. Please, go ahead. Alright then. I've been poking around places connected to the Seven Mysteries, looking for curse bearers. And I think I've found a few candidates. <gasps> First a tall man I ran into in Kinshibori Park. That's the man in black that I was talking about. Who saw Shogo. I asked him for directions, trying to probe him a little, but he turned the questions right back around on me. And he was out of there the second he figured I wasn't what he was looking for. I got the sense curses were nothing new to him. I'm about 40% sure he's a curse bearer. Then there's this middle-aged guy I saw on South Wadigasui Street. There's no question about this one. He had one of the curse stones in his hand. He had a nervous air about him, too. It was clear he was up to some shady business. It's shady, because I think because I think that's the guy with the shadows. It's, it's funny. Gathering soul drugs, I'd bet. He'd make a good target. Next up is a pair. A young man and woman I saw on Ryogoku Bridge. This time, the man came up to me and asked me flat out if I was a curse bearer. I told him I didn't know what he was talking about, and he backpedaled and left. Looks like they lurk around there often. Looking for kindred spirits would be my guess. Though it didn't seem like they were quite working as a pair. Gathering soul dregs in a group might be a decent idea, if you could make it work. But with things being how they are, it's gotta be hard to find folks one can trust. They've got brass, though. I don't know what their deal is, but I'd like to find out. Last of two detectives I've seen sniffing around. The police are involved? Not necessarily. A body turned up in a local park a few days ago, so they might just be looking into that. Still, the park's got ties to one of the seven mysteries. Might be it was a curse that did the guy in. And if they're sending in detectives from the head office, then something's gotta be up. How do you know where they're from? Let's just say that when you're in this business, there are some faces you get to know. Anyway, that's everyone who's caught my eye. 
You found all of them in so little time? I really did hire the best. It's all in the name, ma'am. Richter Kai, P.I. No, wait. Make that Richter Kai, investigator extraordinaire. My, an investigator extraordinaire. Is that why you can dress like that without drawing attention to yourself? You bet. An investigator extraordinaire can blend in like a chameleon in any outfit. Well, that aside. The middle-aged man and the young couple sound the most promising. Am I right? Whichever we pick, it's still too early to make a move. It seems like the curse bearers are less involved with each other than we thought. Plus, there are still others we don't know about. I say we hang fire and see how things play out. Once more bodies start showing up, that'll get the pot nice and hot. And once it's boiling, our chance will come. Damn, bro. That's intense. There's a Toxel in chat, which is a poison baby. Throw your balls if you like a Toxel. I'll try to get one. Isn't that the goofy hair of the guy who claimed to be afraid of her? Um, I You could say that. However, I am pretty sure that uh, not only is he not middle-aged, I'm pretty sure Richter would recognize him if he saw him. Like, even if he only saw him from the back, he's good at recognizing people. So, I, I think he would be like, oh, it, it was fucking Jonochi, you know? Maybe they're related. Maybe they just have the same barber. <laughs> yeah, good luck on Toxel, everybody. All right. Is something wrong? Not really. It just struck me. It's been 20 years since the Najima murders. So it has. Not a spooky or anything, but I thought you might be interested in knowing. Hmm? Life in prison doesn't always mean life. Here we go. There's precedent for first-time offenders being allowed out on parole after 20 years. Only if they found to show remorse and the desire to reform themselves, of course. That's right. I'm impressed you know so much. Still, it's hard for someone with a criminal record to reintegrate into society. I hear they've been trying to fix that recently, matching inmates with jobs and accommodation. Oh, really? They keep an eye on them, of course, and make them report in for regular checkups. But to avoid discrimination, they keep the inmates' records a secret from everyone but their employers. They even give particularly notorious criminals new identities so they won't be recognized in the workplace. My. The way you put it. It's like you're saying Fumichika Najima could be out on parole right now. Back in society under a new name with nobody any the wiser. It's possible. As it happens, a little birdie told me about a big name making parole a few months back. I don't know if that was Najima, but our discussion just now did bring it to mind. I see. How unsettling. Now that you mention it, I just remembered something too. What was it? I was passing Komagata High School a little while ago when I saw someone. A janitor, I think. And I could have sworn he reminded me of Fumichika Najima. Oh? He looked a little different after 20 years. Much thinner than I remembered, too. I told myself I was just seeing things. But perhaps? Perhaps it was him after all. So, what next? The big question now is what the rest of the curse bearers are up to. Luckily, the Sumida River is a good distance from any of the Seven Mysteries. It's unlikely the other curse bearers will come all the way here. I can finally have a moment to think. I see. All right. Excuse me? Hmm? Oh god. Oh god, who the fuck is it? Who the fuck are you? Oh yeah, it's you. Where did she come from? It's like she appeared out of nowhere. I didn't mean to startle you. I'm terribly sorry if I've gotten the wrong people, but would you happen to be curse bearers? <laughs> curse bearers? What's that then? Um, it means someone who's gathering souls for the rite of resurrection. You have heard of the rite of resurrection, haven't you? Everybody's talking about it. Color me intrigued. Care to tell me more, Miss, uh, what was your name again? Oh, silly me. I'm Ayame Tono. University Sunayame Tono. Tono, even. Is 
She certainly had no reservations telling us about the Rite of Resurrection. It'll be worth keeping an eye on her. She could be trouble. Yeah, let me go back. Rick just said he was a fully grown man when he said you're afraid of her, but being a fully grown man is not the same as being middle-aged. Being middle-aged means that you're like 50. 40 to 50. Did you know prisoners have developed a system of communicating down the blocks with one another about how bad they feel about their crimes? Remorse code? <laughs> Why do they let the teenage girl murderer work at high school? <laughs> He's great with the broom, IDK. They used his weight to basically say he could be any of the guys. Yeah, they're like, he lost weight, so he's unrecognizable, so we don't know. But we don't know anything else about the janitor. Like, we, we seem to think that Hadaway is pretty, like, whip-smart, but I don't know if she totally is. <laughs> now, now it's coming more that maybe she is not. She is a shut-in. So. Everyone's talking about it. That's the thing, Nikki. Everyone is talking about it. New music? This is the tension music, yeah. You like her sweater? So, I don't know... Yeah, so we know... We've seen Ayane from when... In the very, very beginning when we were playing as Shogo, Ayane was with Yutari, Namigaki, the guy with the whisper curse. The feet curse. <laughs> I hate to call it the feet curse, but it's the curse with the feet in it, you know? So... He's hiding it well, but I can sense that he's got his guard up. Could there be more to this girl than meets the eye? Wait, didn't he just- Didn't Richter just tell us, like, oh, I saw a guy and a girl who were like, hey, we're curse bearers. So... How does Ayame not recognize Richter if Yutari came up and talked to him? Maybe just Yutari went while Ayame was waiting, so... Ayame doesn't recognize him somehow, but Yutari would. And I guess Haruei doesn't have enough of a description of her to recognize her? I don't know. He doesn't stand on a crowd. She did address both of them, and not just one of them. Yeah, but the thing is, Ayame came up and said, Are you guys curse bearers? When allegedly, Ayame. Like, Richter hasn't said, like, Hey, I fucking recognize you. We talked an hour ago, <laughs> you know? I should ask her what her deal is. Yeah, like. This is what's confusing to me. There's more to the Rite of Resurrection than meets the eye, you see. So the best way to collect soul dregs is to kill other curse bearers. And that's about the size of it. I hope it wasn't too much to follow. I think he talked to the spoiled kid and not her. I think so too, but every time we've seen you- Like, number one, in the little flashback thing, Richter- when Richter was talking about, like, oh, I saw these two kids, he showed Yutari and Ayame, and we know from playing as Shogo that, like, Yutari will talk to somebody while Ayame is watching, and, like, making sure that things are okay, I guess? So, if Richter just talks to Yutari, how does... Richter's just talking to Yutari, he sees Ayame, and knows that she's a curse bearer, or probably a curse bearer, and then this conversation comes up, and neither of them recognize each other? Are they both supposed to be pretending? <laughs> she might also be playing mind games? I guess so. You think if Richter knew what the curse- what her curse did and was like trying to get around it that he would have mentioned it though, you know? So what was she doing when he got jumped by the cops? I think that was before they met, because that was all the way back at like 11 p.m. When Shogo meets Yutari and Ayame, it's, I think, already- it's either midnight or it's one. I think it's probably past one. And this is past one. And when Richter recalls seeing Yutari, he also mentions Ayame, and Ayame is also there. So I think it's just that Yutari and Ayame are both curse bearers, but they don't meet until, like, midnight. Or so. I don't fucking know, dog. <laughs> no, no, I think I got the gist. Funny old world we live in, huh? So, are you saying you're one of these curse bearers? No. Well, not quite. It's complicated. I'm not, but Yutaro is. Yutaro? Is that your boyfriend? Am I delusional? Did Richter not say Yutaro came right up to me and said that he was a curse bearer? And then I'm to believe that Yutaro didn't mention that to Ayame for the whole night? This is confusing. 
But I don't think deliver he absolutely did, right? So like if they're both playing dumb, then that like I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it makes sense. I thought he saw the couple. This is the couple that he's talking about. It's not a weird time jump thing happening? No. Because um, Richter saying that he saw those two was in this same chapter. For us streaming and talking all the time, this was like 45 minutes ago. But in the context of the game, this was like five minutes ago. What's weird is that what we know for sure is that Yutari Namagaki and Richter Kai had a conversation where Yutari said, I'm a curse bear. You want to be friends? And Richter said, uh, I'm not a curse bear. And also no. And Richter also mentions that he saw Ayame, so theoretically would recognize her. So I'm to believe that they are both playing mind games, even though they both know that they met each other. Or... Richter is playing mind games, and Ayame somehow genuinely doesn't know Richter because at no point in time can she recognize his face. And also, uh, Yutaro never told her about him. Isn't Yutaro not a curse bear anymore? He lost his Natsuki. Yes, he's not a... Er, actually, I don't know how much the timelines affect one another. So I think he's... Like, when it comes to, to the timeline where we play as uh, Tsutsumi and Eryo, he's not. But I don't know if this one is being affected by that one yet. That happens in that timeline. Are you able to choose which character chapter you play? Yes, but not until the chapter's over. I was under the impression that this was all the same timeline, just different stories in the same timeline. Um, it could be. It could be either way. It's... I can't tell. Genuinely, I can't tell. Um... Because the thing is, when timelines and timeline like crossing events and stuff in video games are represented, they will usually actually pass each other. And that has not occurred in this. They are three straight along timelines so far. Shogos has the one bump where it's like, ba, 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 and then it goes like, e -er, and then it goes over, but that doesn't intersect with anybody else's. And, um, Yako, Tsutsumi, and Hadaway's timelines are all going straight across right now. So I don't know if they're affecting each other yet. Oh heavens no, just a friend. His full name is Yutaro. I called him Yutari, didn't I? I think I did. My bad. Yutaro Namigaki. We're, I suppose you could say partners in crime. Funny way of putting it. Ah, that must be it. She must be half of the young couple Richter mentioned. So Hadaway's figured it out even though she's never seen her. What's happening, dog? So where is this Yutado now? Well, about that. Now we know. He's not actually a curse bear anymore. Then why'd you say that? Pfft. He's more like a former curse bear. Former? How so? I don't really know the details myself, but apparently he lost his curse stone. Typical, right? He makes such a show of being a top student, only to flunk where it counts. Damn! So now I'm out here looking for curse bears myself. If you want something done right... <laughs> Who the fuck are you? Yeah. She says her name's Ayame. I guess she's around 20. She must be brave walking around alone this late. Or maybe there's more to it. Like, again, she says she's not a curse bearer, but I don't know why I believe that. About why you approached us. So anyway, mind if I ask why you thought I was a curse bearer? Oh, that. I'm terribly sorry. I was so rude. I saw the two of you out late at night, and I suppose I made assumptions. Gotcha. Sorry if we gave you the wrong idea. Out of interest, what was your plan if we did turn out to be curse bears? <laughs> Wild thought. What if we were curse bears? Great question. And the answer is, I was going to ask you very nicely for your curse stones. And you thought we'd have given them to you just like that? Well, maybe not. But you know what they say, you never know until you ask. You must really love your boyfriend if you're willing to try something that risky. Oh goodness, no. We're just friends. My life doesn't revolve around him, you know. Keep asking questions, Richter. Who's Richter? Wife? Oh, Vash, you hadn't seen Richter yet? I mean, this is a man, honey. With a beauty mark and everything. Friends on hard, I bet he's a real nice guy. <laughs> I don't know if we've seen, I don't know if he's if we've been shown that before. I don't buy this game. 
Godspeed. I think it's still on sale, right? Because it's still release week? About the Rite of Resurrection. So what are you trying to do with this Rite of Resurrection? Well, Yutado has his own plan all laid out. I don't know if I can get behind it, though. It seems... How do I put it? Self-centered? I mean, if you've got a chance to resurrect the dead, it would be a waste not to use it on someone that really matters, right? So I was planning to steal his curse stone at the last second and use it for myself. <laughs> well, until he lost it, anyway. Oh, but don't tell Yutado I was going to do that, okay? I don't think he'd be happy to hear it. Of course, keeping secrets is my business. My aren't you dashing? She's so sick of them. She's sick of it. She's over it. He lost it? How did he do that? I wasn't with him at the time, so I don't know exactly what happened. All I know is that he came back saying he didn't have it anymore. Although, well... It's strange that you'd probe into that, of all things. It's just a curious- or I'm just a curious sir, that's all. Sorry if it's a touchy subject. Oh, I don't mind. I don't particularly care about keeping it a secret. Thuthbithith. She must have some power to manipulate people even if she doesn't have a curse stone, yeah. I still think that she m is pro- well, actually, hang on, if we count. Because there's a couple we still don't know. Let me- let me keep a good count. Whispering Canal, check. Fool's Procession, check. Beckoning Light, we don't know who it is, but we're pretty sure it's that older man. Haunting Clappers, check. Evergreen Beach, check. Taiko of Tsukaru, not check. Foot Washing Mansion, check. One-sided Reed. I don't think it- I don't think we've even seen someone who has that. Ever-Burning Lantern. Is that a check? No. So, I mean, we- we are missing people. Because, I mean, okay, we see real quick. Shogo or Yoko, or third person. Um, Yako. Mysterious guy in the dark. Uh, this one is- is Haruei's, right? Yeah. Tsutsumi. Tsutsumi. Unknown. Yutaro. Unknown. Unknown. I'm pretty sure. So she could be, and I think she might be, but either way, she's a weirdo. <laughs> Presumably the murder guy has one of them. Yeah, I think the murder guy has this one, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm- I just- I think it's this one. No matter what, she weird. It's very weird. The art in this game is very pretty, Vash, I agree. I don't know if you're, um, if you heard this, Vash, but the, I'm pretty sure the lead character designer was also the lead character designer on Neo The World Ends With You, and I think worked not as a lead, but as a character designer on the original The World Ends With You as well, I think. I might have a couple of those things wrong, but we'll see. The beckoning light like that guy you killed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's what we mean, Ambrose. The, the murderer guy in the dark who we believe is this middle-aged man that Richter saw earlier. Anyway, you aren't curse bearers, so I'm just bothering you, aren't I? Please ignore me. I love those games, you know me too well. I didn't even know that. I just know that it's a pretty, um... A pretty, pretty well-beloved design. Toby's got big fun character design, yeah. Like, I'm not even- I'm not really here for Twoey. Like, it's not really my thing. Um, but the designs look great. And like, once you look at these designs and then you hear that, you're like, Oh, that makes sense. I thought there's both middle-aged man and serial killer. We don't know if the serial killer is a curse bearer yet, technically. We know that he probably has something to do with all this, but there's no indication so far that he's a curse bearer. Um, middle-aged man... Well... Let me back up. We know that when we play a Shogo, there's a guy who traps us in the dark and tries to kill us who we know is a man. We don't know how old he is, we don't know anything else about him. However, earlier when Richter said he was casing the joint, he saw a middle-aged man around the street that that happened to Shogo around kind of the same time that in Shogo's timeline that happens to him. So that's why I'm saying the middle-aged man is probably that guy. We're not sure. Serial killer? Total fucking loose cannon wild card. Maybe he really is reintegrating into society and that's the big plot twist. Maybe that's not even him and Hadaway didn't recognize him. Maybe he's still in prison. Maybe he has something to do with the curses. Maybe he's a curse bearer. Could be anything. 
but he's he's uh Nijima's a, an enigma for now but yeah so that's where we are have I saved I think I have Yutada can be a little irrational sometimes so I have to keep a level head on my shoulders <laughs> is that what you say about him <laughs> sounds like you really have your hat your heart set on this right what were you hoping to use it on do you promise you won't laugh if you are also going to resurrect a dog named Ogopogo, I swear to God. Cross my heart. Well then let me tell you my master plan. Prepare to be amazed. <clears throat> I'm an art student, you see. Woodblock prints are my specialty. Ukiyo-e are in Ukiyo-e? Ukiyo-e? Art in particular. Ukiyo-e, huh? You must be a cultured lady. Really? Do you think so? Everybody says it's a strange interest for a girl to have. She wants to make art. I bet you she wants to like she she's she wants to wreck resurrect a famous artist is what she's gonna say, right? You know, people often think of Ukiyo as some inaccessible high class art form, but that's actually totally untrue. Back in the Edo period, it was the art for the masses, amusement for the common people. So when you think about it, we feel exactly the same thrills from every brushstroke as they did back then. Isn't that fascinating? Huh. Yeah, I guess. Ha I know it's because Hadaway is depressed. <laughs> But she looks so funny. She's like, I can't fucking believe that I'm listening to this horse shit. And as far as I'm concerned, the undisputed king of Ukiyo is the one and only Hokusai. Have you heard of him? Sure I have. He's famous. Didn't he live somewhere around here back in the Edo period? That's right. You're just as knowledgeable as you look. His 36 views about Fuji are so iconic, they're the only works of his most people know. <laughs> but Hokusai was so much more than just mountains and waves. That's only the teeny tiny tip of a veritable iceberg of work. I've got to admit, I only really know him from those landscapes myself. Oh, don't worry about it. Anyone can learn. When Hokusai died at the age of 90, he left behind over 30,000 drawings. That's multiple drawings a day for 80 years. Amazing, right? So he kept on drawing right up into his old age, huh? Impressive. But even in his final years, he was never satisfied with his own work. <laughs> She wants to recreate the Doctor Who episode. <laughs> His dying words were, Should heaven afford me but five more years, I shall finally become a true artist. Even on his deathbed, he still thought he had more to learn. He was already the greatest painter and artist of his era. Who knows what he could have done with more time. Well, that's what I want to find out. Eh? Oh, hold on. Are you saying... Besides, he always said he wanted to move out of a hundred houses, but he only made it to 93. Isn't that just tragic? Oh no. Nah. No way this is going where I think it's going. Imagine the masterpieces he could create with modern techniques. I feel all dizzy just thinking about it. You've got to be kidding me. So if I understand correctly, you want to use the Rite of Resurrection to... That's right. I want to bring Hokusai back to life. Well, that's certainly a novel idea. <laughs> she wants to bring back her 11-year-old son who got murdered. And you're saying you want to bring back a 90-year-old artist from the Edo period. That's what she'd use it on? What a waste. Oh gosh, is that the time? I should be going. I need to get my hands on a curse bear before daybreak. Sorry for flagging you down out of the blue like that. Best of luck! <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> well, there goes trouble. If we're going after curse tones, we should keep an eye on her. Too, if we can. Why do you say that? Before she left, she wished us best of luck. She's got at least an inkling that we're curse bearers. My. There's a good chance we'll clash sooner or later. We're after the same thing, after all. You head on back to the mansion, ma'am. I think I'll tail her for a while. Mm -hmm. Richter only has one of his wide at any time. <laughs> My fucking god. It alternates? Yeah, his, um, it's just because his sprite flips, so you'll notice his mole switches sides, too. What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> so 
so so not the not the Van Gogh episode of Doctor Who, but not that different either. Victor is so meow meow. That's your little meow meow bash. We're getting goofy. The game does keep it light sometimes, which is good because a lot of this shit is fucking depressing. You know. And I miss some stuff. Whoop! That's my phone trying to tell me to go to sleep. One moment. I mean, like when Mio and what's her name were talking, and they were like, "Nobody here but maybe the janitor," and the lights turn off, and she saw a ghost. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That is. I was kind of thinking of that, but they said the janitor wouldn't even be there that late. So, I mean, I, I, I it's probably too much to assume that those are throwaway lines, but still, it could have been him. I. Th oh yeah, we haven't gotten back to them, so they haven't really talked about what the darkness thing might be yet. But I thought it was supposed to be part of that Feast of Darkness situation. But we'll see. They could also be the same middle-aged man. Potentially. Because Haraway said that she saw the janitor who she thought maybe might kind of look like Nijima. Days prior. Look at that sweater. That's an art student. Uh-huh. And the beret? Now come on now. I love my RBF wife. <laughs> So Ambrose's wife is Hadaway, and Vash's husband is Richter. I do have to say, though, Vash, you, you can't be Richter's only significant other. You're gonna have to share him, I think. Let him lie, I know. <laughs> I have no chance to, <laughs> but to stay like Ambrose. She's funny, but I feel like she's gonna snap or something. Give this lady a stone and let her loosen them all. No! Yeah, she wants to resurrect him, gas him up, and then get free labor. She just wants to know what he'll do if he gets a hold of Photoshop. Who is the best use for a stone? Why is it the girl who wants to resurrect a 90 year old man? You see him fuck Ogopogo to more? I love when a visual novel gets wild. Yeah, it's always had like. It's always been wild, but in a horrifying and complicated detective true crime and also just terrible things happening way. But a little bit of goofy. He's your blorbo. Yoko summoned the Feast of Darkness. She's the origin of everything. We don't know that yet. Y'all, y'all are forgetting about the fucking, the fucking shadow CEO of the soap company who set the Man in Black Tam Tamio. No, that's not right. Hang on. What's his name? Where the hell is he? Takumi, that's his name. Takumi Yumiuka. My god. We supported Bingo Poly King. Exactly, there you go. She's gonna murder someone, Ayame, but it'll be funny. My ideal presentation is too similar to Richter to make him any him my wife. Right, so you take out away. Will he still be 90 years old? Yes! He's just gonna die <laughs> immediately. Yoko's the mind behind the curses. It's all about Ogopogo. <laughs> Gonna go to bed, but you've convinced me to get this game and play it. I just have it. it looks so much fun. Have a good one. All right, night, night, Vash. I'm gonna be signing off here in just a second too. I think I don't know if I want to read all these right now. I'll speed through them. A little, spe little speedy. If there's anything new, Ayame is a clever but calculating university student who only has time for her own interest. She's making the best of a recent boom in the popularity of female university students, incited by their appearance across TV commercials and radio programs. Ayami is content to ride this trend so long it as it allows her to get her hands on whatever she needs and wants in life. Recently, Ayami has figured out that older men will fall for her if she acts a little bit stupid. Is she my favorite character now? <laughs> She's a player! She's a gold digger! She was approached by Yutaro Namigaki in town, and although she was not attracted to him, agreed to date him because his family seemed rich! However, she does not think much of him as a human being and is beginning to grow bored of their relationship. She <laughs> Damn. My god. This is why I kind of woke. <laughs> oh my god, there's an entire entry on, on oh, oh, uh, Hokusai. Katsushika Hokusai. Painting by Katsushika Hokusai. 36 views in Mount Fuji, the great wave of off Kanagawa. A master ukiyo-e artist, 1760 to 1849. Hokusai was active during the late Edo period, considered to be the golden age of ukiyo -e in Japan. Born in Honjo, Hokusai spent most of his life in the area now known as Sumida City. Among his most famous works are the 36 views of Mount Fuji and the Hokusai manga. 
Hokusai was a prolific artist from a young age and has left behind a wide variety of works, producing an estimated 30,000 pieces during his lifetime. Though the general popularity of ukiyo-e declined during the Meiji period, Me Meiji, Meiji period, Hokusai remained a core figure at the center of the Japanese Mei movement, providing inspiration for countless artists around the globe. Despite his fame, Hokusai himself was said to be rather indifferent to money or decorum and lived a life that quite appropriately resembled that of the whimsical and otherworldly scenes often depicted in the ukiyo-e. Though he went by many names, in his later years he took on the title of Gakyo Rojin Manji, or the Old Mad Painter. Hokusai lived to be 90 years old and never lost his passion for art. Ooh. She has the sugar daddy and takes her girlfriends out with his money! <laughs> huh. Let me get out of here, y'all. I did go to five hours, I only went to go to four and a half, but... You know? I love art. And I love to, I love to provide.